subdivision regulations related to fire protection. We'll do pending applications. We have three pending applications. We have Bentley's campground, uh, conditional use, major conditional use. We have Motorland, a conditional use pre-application. And we have Cape Arundel Cottage Preserve, an amendment <coughs> to the original subdivision approval. We did have an item on for a new application, PaveTech uh, Corporation Contractor Yard, but given the provisions of the Board of Selectmen there have been NOVs issued against this individual, and the planning board cannot hear his application until they have been resolved. NOVs? Notice of violation. Okay. He was, he was served mm -hmm. by the CEO. I'm just turning around saying for clarity oh, for yeah. the public. I understand. Uh, can I make a motion we approve the uh, agenda as amended? Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. It's unanimous. I will call a public hearing to, uh, for the Residential Growth Ordinance Amendment. Uh, it is 7.05 p.m. Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to address the growth ordinance? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing at 7.06. And I will open the public hearing for the amendment to the subdivision regulations related to uh, fire protection requirements for subdivisions. Is there anyone that has any comment on the fire relation, fire regulations for, the, for subdivisions? Hearing none, I will close this meeting at 7.06 as well. I want to make it seven, or at least give it a minute. Okay. <laughs> My watch only tracks it. Then stutter a few minutes. Let's just start whole minutes. Okay, so do it for the whole minute. Make it 707. Okay, pending applications. Bentley's Campground, conditional use, major conditional use, a proposal to expand the existing RV campground in five additional phases, developing an additional 137 new sites with utility hookups and support facilities on 46.28 acres tax map 30 lot 24 located at 1601 Portland Road in the DB2 district Bentley Warren the third is the applicant Rick Light of Great Environmental Design is the applicant's agent Chair, members of the board, I'm Rick Light, Light Environmental Design. 
Uh, with me tonight, I have Bentley and uh, Bob Klein, uh, legal counsel. Uh, I think tonight uh, we're hopeful that we're going to be looking at closing the conditional use application, hopefully go walking through that. Um, we're hopeful, and hopefully the board is on the same page, that we will be able to get a condition of approval tonight. Um, <clears throat> bit of a backup since the last meeting, uh, as you've probably been informed. We did go to the Board of Selectmen a week ago, and then again this last uh, Monday, and they did sign a consent agreement, which basically, in so many words, takes the issue of the winter storage of units off the table as a, as a violation issue, so the board can move forward. Well, no, I would point out that it does not. That violation that, that we discussed in the meeting was a violation of the conditional use permit, not a condition of the, the land use ordinance. So at this point, you are in compliance with your conditional use permit mm -hmm. because the because the, the, the sites were, were moved. But the consent agreement that you entered into with the Board of Selectmen specifically related to NOV violations that have been issued against you. The Board of Selectmen have no authority to regulate a condition of use permit under the land use ordinance. I'll, I'll so that you. will that will stay in effect and you will have to remove the prop the trailers by the time October comes around for your permit. And then that's essentially what the consent agreement says. Yeah. And, then, and just for the record, there, there hasn't been a, a notice of violation issued. We acknowledge that there's a trailer there, and the ordinance says otherwise. We acknowledge that. And that was sort of spelled out in the consent agreement. So the purpose of the consent agreement was basically a vehicle, as we felt, to allow this issue to move forward so that we can focus, and the board hopefully can focus on the conditional use permit. In the meantime, what we would, our intent would be to do is to work with the board and the towns and staff to amend the ordinance. That would be the goal to work closely with the board and, and uh, add, amend the ordinance so that we don't have this issue in front of us um, in the future. So that, that's fine. I just wanted to make, make sure that you understood it was not an NOV violation. So it was not a violation of the Board of Selectmen policy. It was a violation of the conditional use permit that was issued that allowed phase two to go through. The permit itself specified that trailers would not be kept during over the, the winter time they were. That's the violation. Okay. And the Board of Selectmen does not have the authority to address the conditional okay. use permit violation. Understood. Okay. okay? We're, we're fine with those conditions. Okay. okay. So, in our last meeting, our last two meetings ago actually, and uh, we had a meeting on April 14th and April 27th, um, I'll go down through what I believe, or and hopefully I haven't missed any items, but I believe the outstanding items were that we had prior discussed. Maybe do a quick overview. Um, one was the tow road. We had discussed at the last meeting, uh, Bentley had thought long and hard about it, that we didn't feel that there were any restrictions to be placed on the use of the, the connecting road, the so-called tow road. And we were going to put one gate, after, again, after Bentley thought about it, putting two gates is just going to be a headache. It doesn't serve any real purpose. But they will put signage at this end, so if somebody does come in, again, this is private property. For somebody to be coming in his private driveway going in this way, but the signage saying, no, do not enter private, the gate would go down here as discussed in the non box for the fire chief. And we're still providing an easement over that road for the fire chief to get to the pond. When, uh, when the pond is developed? Yes, in phase, I think it's phase three, the pond is developed. And not at the present time. Right. The, uh, the easement isn't there because the pond's not correct. There, there is a pond there now. Okay. There's a, a good sized pond. We're making the pond bigger. Bigger. For yeah. Me. But I mean, now, right now, there's a, a real sufficient amount of water for fire protection. Well, it should be to have enough rain. No, it always is. It always maintains the spring yeah. thing. Right. No. Okay. <clears throat> um, second item, I'm just going through my punch list. The second item is that all, it, it's on the notes on the plan, all campers come from Route 1. There's no campers coming from Old Post Road. Um, third is the buffers that agree upon. We discussed at the site walk. Uh, we, we did a visual take of the buffers in this northern part of the site. And our proposal is still, hopefully the board has agreed to this, that this buffer would be covenanted with a deep covenant in this area here. And, and we've also proposed in the northern area of the, the road that there be limited cutting on there through some through restrictions placed on the plan note. 
I don't Rick, can you do me a favor? Sure. Come on this side of the table. Oh. We're trying to play people I'm sorry, I'm sorry about sorry that. that. My apologies. And that we would have uh, we have language on the plan notes about limited cutting in, in this area in here that we look at on the site. The other item that we uh, made an amendment to, uh, which we thought would be an improvement, was to take the 50 foot extension of the berm and put it 90, rather than having it extend this way, put it 90 degrees, you get more coverage that way. It's more more buffering. So that would be an agreed upon uh, improvement. The board, I believe, motioned or at least discussed that procedurally, on a three year basis, we would come back to the board. The board would review traffic. We would provide updated traffic numbers. Uh, the board would do a site walk or have the pleasure of doing a site walk. Uh, the board would uh, look at the tow road, entertain if there had been any issues with the tow road or use of it in the prior three year period, and review the work that was done in the prior phases of the prior three years. Did I get that correct in terms of what we discussed? And at the end of each phase, uh, with the CEO as built, will be submitted, stamped as built of the prior phase to ensure compliance of that phase uh, as, as, as the project moves forward every, on an annual basis or at the completion of each phase basis. Uh, on, a, on the performance guarantee, we discussed having a conditional approval, which was based on the idea of no occupancy until all site approvals have been done for that particular phase. And last but not least was the uh, Condition for a hydrant out on Room 1. Have I missed any other key points? Hydrant is going to be in my game plan. The hydrant, the northern plan says within, I believe, 30 days of approval or end of the summer, subject to okay, note number eight, and I will read that uh, through the chair. A fire hydrant shall be installed during the 2017 campground season on U.S. Route 1. Final location be determined by the Arundel Fire Chief and KKW Water. So it will be done this year. And that's got to be at the time that we can open the road up. We'll right. right. That's so, you know, yeah. With the state and with the town and with the water department. You know, everything's got to be coordinated. But as oh, yeah, we yeah, can, yeah. we won't do that. Yeah, but I know it closes the road in November. Okay, but springtime comes. After they take the frost heaves out, it's open game. Well, as soon as we can, we're going to go with, you know, once, once, once the board approves us, we'll okay. get proceed. started on that. Yeah, we'll proceed. Yeah. I know that when you set the evening, it's going to be done for you, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> so right now, the only one that we've done is phase one, correct? No. Have you done phase two? Okay, what we, uh, a little bit of uh, sort of nomenclature. This is the original, we call it the original 38 sites. Phase one, as we call it here, has been constructed, other than these two sites which were left, remember, closed off. Mm -hmm. And this road, the access road, we crashed <coughs> over. As That's, so that we would start with these phases here, phase two through seven. Okay. All you do is we're asking that to see how you have phase two up there. Down. Right there. So oh, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, pointing down this way to this area right in here. Okay, yeah. well, that's that's the only reason I was got it. Look at it, turn out saying, well, phase two, it's up in here, there instead of down here. Yeah. Yay. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Knowing this is your busy season and everything else, is any of this going to be done during the summer or just prep yes. work? When we get when we get the permits, we're going to start. Okay. I did know uh, yeah. with, uh, with all your campers. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to do any. No, we won't. There, you know, no. do some of the basic yeah. uh, pipe work and that all yeah. that stuff. I mean, uh, they won't interfere with what we have going on. Yeah. They won't interfere with that. No, I swear I would just, yeah. you know. Right here, yeah.
would have been nice if we did it earlier, but we didn't. <laughs> a little, a little <stymied. laughs> the plan is to do these according to phase number. Or is there some other? <coughs> the, the plan was, I think we had a discussion about this. We don't know the exact phasing, but the intent was to certainly start with phase two, which is the sort of connecting road through here. Phase two and likely phase three. Beyond that, we didn't want to commit to the numerical sequencing. It might go right into phase seven. Might go into phase five. Not quite sure in terms of numerically. If, so, if you do five, seven, four, I don't have a problem with that. But most of the conditions that are on the plan relate to phase three. Phase three. The the gate, the pond. Yes. All of the other infrastructure that we're looking at relate to phase three. So, okay. I would like to see. If you do phase two, phase three, that's fine. But I don't want you to go two, five, seven, and come back to three at the end. I want to see all of the infrastructure done in a oh, timely fashion. The pond, the, the, yeah. pond, the, yeah. the, the dry hydrants, right. all of the information, all of the other infrastructure, everything that's related to here on phase three. By the third phase. The wet phase. pond, the dry hydrants, the turn. By the third phase, regardless of what phase number that Correct. happens to be. But by, yeah, whatever the third phase is, Correct. we're in agreement. Well, that's understandable. Okay. Yeah, it just says phase three. Yeah. Right. A well, literal interpretation would be I could do yeah. from one through seven right. and then go back and do three later. Yeah. Well, just if we get all that, all those criteria for phase three, we could do another phase, but you want to get all those things done with the dry hydrant, the pond, the rock. By the end of the third phase, with whatever right. number that phase has. <laughs> about the, the, the three-year review and, and the total time frame. Okay. I, I had an earlier meeting I had suggested that a, a new permit, that, that, that we approve the master plan, but that every three years, regardless of how much or how little had gotten done, uh, that, that a new conditional use permit would be required for any additional construction past that point. Uh, and that the master plan would be approved for seven years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where we stand in regards to that. I know we've had, we've had a lot of discussion about it, but I don't think we've ever actually voted on yeah. how we, we want to see that go through. No. If, if it's appropriate through the chair? Yes. To answer that question, um, my recollection was, and through our notes, is that we talked about uh, having a nine year. After nine years, the uh, we'd have to come back for conditional use permit for whatever is not completed. The review, the interim reviews, wouldn't be filing for a new conditional use permit. They would be sort of uh, compliance reviews at the end of the three-year periods, not formal. So we're basically getting the master plan approved, and then every three years we come before the board to identify those items we talked about to do an internal review of conditions of work that's been done. But the conditional use permit was for the master. It's important that it's for the whole master plan. And then at the end of the nine years, whatever's not built has to come before the board for a new permit, a new application. I have no other question. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, I was going to, I mean, at, uh, pertaining to that, either Rick or Bentley, refresh my memory on what your anticipated construction <laughs> schedule would be. You know, just in big picture phasing. You know, I mean, well, like first of all, as soon as possible, and actually, but just money restrictions and all that stuff, and we can only, we got to walk before we run, we're just going to get as much done as we can. And so, from what I understood, we're going to come back in for, if we're in compliance with everything that's on the plan, and we did, we conformed everything that, 
you know, we'll just be going to be able to go through with it just in three years from then, I think, and have a review of it. But what would you, what would you reasonably expect to accomplish this year? You know, you get approval and you go to town and... I'm hoping we get phase three done and maybe something else, you know, I mean, we, what we got to do in phase three, we got to do that other thing yep. that you're saying about. Uh, so a, a phase a year? I mean, is that... Maybe more, uh, maybe more. Okay. We don't know. I mean, yeah. it just depends how much ledge we hit. Yeah. You know, just. Okay. Yeah, Marty. I remember, I thought it was seven years. I don't remember the, the, the number nine. Yeah, seven years. I mean, uh, like I said, nine just crawled out of my head. I mean, I, I didn't sound. Because I thought, for some reason, when we were talking, it was seven. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that mentioned, nine does seem like an odd year, you know, number of years. I mean, the only logic I could put to it thinking was that, you know, three, you know, three, three year stints got you to nine. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm not I trying to restrict I think Marty was correct. I, I, I yep. don't like where it's a good seven. Seven, seven, seven. I don't know. I mean, I, it just rang a bell the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, I said because nine didn't come in into uh, I didn't know something was changed in one of the meetings that I haven't been at, but I think it was I think it, the last time I remember was seven years, I thought. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. Okay. That's why I'm asking that. Mm -hmm. I, I have a well, well, Mr. the chair, can, can yes, I ask the, the applicant's representative a question? The, 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 the woods north of the tow road uh, and, and north of the identified buffer area, mm -hmm. that, how, how many acres are we talking about there? I'm going to ask, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, about, it's an average of 150, 200 feet by an acre and a half. Two acres, maybe something like that. Something okay, like that. but uh, I, I, I would want to respect it, respectfully ask: Would the applicant be willing to consider leaving that area the way it is, and rather than doing additional cutting on that? I mean, we we were out there on the sidewalk, and it, it's it's not it's not a buffer now. Uh, Visual buffer, not much of one, certainly not in the wintertime. Um, but uh, I was wondering if, if uh, the applicant would be willing to, to consider uh, re refraining from forest management, standard forest management practices, or something like that, as with the notes on, on that paper and two and a half acres, whatever it is. Uh, just, just for the benefit of. of Frankly, uh, Sometimes you cut some of the big stuff away, the smaller stuff grow better. You know what I mean? So this, this, I'm proud. It's a catch I'm, twenty-two. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. pretty well aware how yeah. things grow. Yeah. Uh, Cause, you know, I, I guess that's a no. Quite honest, my concern about a three year review is the history of compliance with the existing condition of use permits that have been given. They've all been violated at one point or another, flagrantly. And I'm kind of concerned about giving you a three year permit. Well, it, the way it's set right now is three years before review, and I have a problem with that. <coughs> respond. I think the, the safety valve here, if you want to call it that, is the annual, or at, at the end of each phase, essentially about each, say a year per phase, is an annual review, no occupancy of that phase until uh, until the code officer is, as, as built and submitted, the code officer reviews and everything is in compliance. So there is a compliance review on an annual basis done by the codes and planning staff, not by the planning board. So that's still being, that's still happening in the background. What we talked about with the board was to reduce the, the sort of the process piece of it. Was a, a, I think the board at the time would agree to run every three years as with those other checks and balances are reasonable uh, reasonable time frame to come back to the board for you. Rich, my recollection, and I don't know the working protocol, it sounds like it does, but my recollection is that there is something in 
the ordinance that specifically has to do with three years. That, 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 that didn't just come out of thin air. Um, and at, at the last meeting, we did talk about a review short of uh, a, 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 a full conditional use permit application. Uh, I, I cannot disagree with you about the history of violations. I, I did not understand clearly until last week that when the, I guess it's the first first phase that's already been constructed was done. The code enforcement officer went out there and there were four extra campsites. Um, and, and the initial remediation proposal was to put garbage bags over the utility connections. Um, the, the utility connections were removed. Um, however, I, I know um, I, I, I think that, that Mr. Light is exactly correct that as occupancy permits are requested and approved, the code enforcement officer is out there. If the code enforcement officer finds violations, they hopefully they will be corrected unless the Board of Selectmen seems otherwise. Um, and I, I, I think a three year, either a three year review or Actually required a conditional use permit for three years. Um, but through the chair, Mr. Light, what will it will it take more than six years for the applicant to complete this construction? Well, we don't know. I think that was the idea. What we think seven seven is a reasonable time frame. It's hard to say. And my you know on my part, because like I said before to the chair. Depends on money, time, weather, ledge. You know, we have a lot of things. Oh, I mean, I mean we've got to put utilities in there, and if it's 500 feet of ledge or something, that takes a lot longer than just digging through the, the, the glacial till. Yeah. Through the chair. Yes. Uh, as each phase is being completed, it is completely reviewed by code of enforcement officer. Okay, before our next phase could be started. And at that same time. I know that that's not the way it's written right now, Marty. Uh, I mean, they can't start another phase. Sure they can. No, they can't. And it says, the way they said it right now, they're going to do phase two first. And they weren't going to start another phase until that phase was completed. Okay. Yeah, where, where, where is what? that? Which note? Uh, which note addresses that, Mr. White? I don't know. If there's a no. I thought that was going to be a condition of approval. The, the oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we have that on. And we can certainly add it as a note. But I thought that that was simply a condition of approval. Um, that at the end of each phase, there would be a compliant uh, review, and that phase can't be occupied. Sites can't be utilized until the code officer signed off on it as a conditional. So it's a conditional guarantee as opposed to a cash surety or cash guarantee. That's where I was then coming you move on the next right yeah. under the review of, of thought so that it would be uh, along that lines, you know, because, but the, the infrastructure is one thing, but turn out completion of, of a phase is, for occupancy, is a different thing. Right. It was it was my understanding that each phase each phase will not be given an occupancy permit until after it has been reviewed by the Correct. CPO. Correct. And that's that's, that's right. what I'm saying is, I mean, but that doesn't mean that they can't start on the next phase. It just means so that they, they may be working the infrastructure. Right. Yeah, Correct. Work more I mean, yeah, if they're laying pipe and, 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 and it got uh, a go, you know, good weather and turn out and no ledge and everything else. I mean, uh, here's the, here's the condition. What, where are you, Rich? Uh, it's, it's in the findings of fact. I know, but where are you in that? It's number eight. 
the applicant shall not proceed to the next development phase until first providing documentation to the planning board of the project's compliance with approved drawings and conditions of this permit. Okay. The regulation <coughs> is 9299310 and all other pertinent sections of the, of the land use ordinance at the planning board request the applicant shall provide the board with an updated traffic impact study evaluating the impact of vehicle queuing and turning movements on route one traffic flow prior to the approval of any successive phase the applicant shall be responsible for reimbursing the planning board for any peer review of such studies the applicant will be responsible for implementing the installation of north and southbound turning lanes if so warranted by the traffic studies so, so it is being set up as a, as a condition of yeah. part of the permit. Yeah. Yes. So so what, what page are you on? It's the it's the last page. Yeah. Okay. It's the proposed findings of that. Right. Mr. Chairman, are there any extra copies of the findings of that that we can walk through? Yeah. 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 Sure. I'll take mine. Yeah. 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 I think I have. I should have another. One. that they were going to build the road through phase seven and use that and not the tote road. But at the last meeting... They changed that, yes. They changed right. that. No, you're, okay. you're absolutely correct. Sorry. Personally, I thought that was a better idea than using the tote road. I thought it was a better idea as well. They also agreed to put a second last box on it and said that they didn't want to do that. Been two years since we saw the original application, and we had a public hearing. No, this when it correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, because the the application was pulled. Okay, that's right. And, and when they resubmitted it, it was a new application, and we've already had a public hearing already on the new application. Well, that's, I I just don't remember having had a hearing. That's why I I said. That. But I'm just saying we had. No, we did have a public hearing. We did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. I, I see, I don't because, remember. Because the gentleman. Chair, Chair, you got a question back there. I can answer your question. Yes, the public hearing was before they tabled it. We were at the public hearing, and Mr. Warren tabled it because he was not happy with whatever you guys were going to do. So, and then a year later, here we are. And in Ted's notes. I mean, he, he mentioned it's been over a year since the last public right. hearing. I believe it was January of 16 that that, that, that public hearing took place. And, that, and that's why I was asking, because I could very easily have, have forgotten. Yes, hey, Mr. Chairman, you know, I, I represent um, the abutters here. And um, my name is Alan Shepard. And we would very much encourage the board to have a public hearing. It's been 
you know, over a year there's been a lot of changes to the plan, so it seems like it would be more, very appropriate for there to be a public hearing so um, the board can get input from the public to the extent that people want to react to the changes in the plan. Okay. It, uh, yeah. it, it, uh, our notes indicate the last time was April 14th of 2016. So that's over a year. And that's now. that's over a year. And there have been multiple okay. changes. April, April 2016. April 14th, April 14th of 2016. Is that good through the chair? Yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's up to the pleasure of the board, but at the last meeting it was discussed and the, the board had a discussion that there did feel there was a need for a public hearing. I just wanted to go on record that that was discussed. Chairman was not present at that meeting. No, I don't think I was. No, this was, this was, this was two meetings. I think you went to uh, down south. The chairman was present at that meeting. That's the 21st, the 13th of the day. No, he was still in town because he was paying taxes. Right. <laughs> yeah, the 13th, I was in town. I'm just using your trade as a, as a point, a location. So let me ask the board. I don't please. recall, I mean, and Rick, you may not be referring to last, the last meeting we had, but I didn't recall much of a discussion at that meeting, the one that, that I acted as, as chairman, mm -hmm. that we discussed a public Hearing. We I did not. I, I did. Okay. And, and unless I was at it from the one before that, I don't think. Through the chair. That was, was this a meeting? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It was a meeting of the 13th. The 13th. Okay. No, I wasn't in the 10th. So. Roger, Tom, Richard, and Marty and James were present at that meeting. I don't know your recollection. I, was, I wasn't in present on April 13th. I can definitively tell you that. Okay. I apologize. That's all right. I, think, I, think it might I can barely keep track of my schedule. This is less expected than YouTuber. But you're right, it says James Absent. I can't even read my own writing. Okay. So I, th I, I think we should have that discussion. We've heard from uh, at a butter that they think that we should have a public hearing. Uh, I, 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 absent and a butter with legal counsel speaking of, I, I probably would be okay moving along, uh, but it had been over a year, uh, and obviously the legal counsel had concerns. Uh, they were, I, 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 I do, for the record, I do want to point out that, that uh, we did have a site walk, which is a public event that all the others are notified of. Did get input from one of the abutters um, on the site walk, uh, which is specifically why I asked the question of it about that one and a half to two and a half acres was the concerns of the abutters regarding traffic on the tow road. What do you think, Jamie? I think I think given the length of time since the public hearing, it's and the and the amount of discussion over varying things in the plan that it, it's warranted to have another. Right. Yeah, I think so too. All right. No. Somebody make a motion, one way or the other. So if you can, can ask now a question. Now question, question make motion, motion, sir. What, would that be doable at the next meeting? I guess since we've got three mm, weeks. No, we not, got the next not, the next next week, week. not next week, but the, that would then be the first meeting in June. Well, because they want to proceed also. I mean, we've had complications since the sidewalk. The term, and the fact is we want to also get <coughs> the, the fire hydrant in and everything else before the season starts. Thursday. Season's already started. It's summer season. We're still in spring. Camping season has already started. Yeah. Well, camping season would be year round. I've done well, winter only, camping and everything else. Only so if you have been Parsons Field and want to wander out in the woods. <laughs> no, so, I've done that year round. So, Rich, I move we um, have a public hearing on June 8th for this. That's the first meeting in June. You know, barring any complications that, that 
I'm not aware of that Ted may know of. Okay. Yeah, notification time frames, that type of thing. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get it in there. Is there a second? I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded to have a public hearing on June 8th. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Those opposed? Four to one. Let's schedule a public hearing and we'll put it on the agenda for that same day. Yeah. Um, for final review. Yeah, Mr. Do Bradley. To, to the chair. Yeah. But, but I want to make I just want to make sure we're gonna have a public hearing on the eighth and on the eighth of the an item on the agenda. Right. Okay. Hold on just for a second, Mike. I wanted to suggest that in the interest of getting getting final approval so the applicant can move forward on the eighth of June, can can we talk now about the phasing and what happens after either phase completion or Three Absolutely. years, or is it six years, or nine years, seven years, whatever it is, could, could, could we get that issue at, at least? I, I know we're not going to take formal action on it, but I, I, I for one, would like to have some kind of consensus well, I think it would, it sooner would be, rather than later. I think, I think it, it would be a great idea that so that we could let uh, Bentley know. Yeah. Well, it, it, it also would allow his, his app, the application to the, the notes to reflect what. Well, yeah. What we're asking for, so it, I, I, I think it would be worthwhile to. Be, and I also don't think that whatever comes out of the public hearing is going to have an impact on that timing, like timing phasing question. <laughs> well, and, and, and even if there is, it's nothing that we as a board can address it. Right, we, we can change. I, I, I guess right. I'm, just, I'm just asking, what, what do the other yeah. board members think about? No, I think I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a valid point. idea. You know, it gives it gives them some things, some, some ideas of where we stand, you know, as a board on the timing of things. So I think it's fair. Oh, uh, and, and I, I, I do have some some question because what the chairman said about or somebody said about completing one phase before the next phase is complete is I'm sorry, not starting construction on, say, phase seven before the early, an earlier phase is completed, constructed, and approved. That was not my understanding of how the applicant wants to develop this property. They, they, my understanding was that he wanted the flexibility to specifically and do with this, this hypothetical construction of um, and I, I share your your thought. I like the idea of building that now, or, or as soon as practicable, to get traffic off the tow road. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I just hope that there was an issue. No, no, but but it's but that, that's but, the valid but, point. But, but it does, that's it the does discussion connect, that it does connect with the with the, right. with the phasing and the approval process. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And. Uh, and, and in addition to that, it, it has an impact. I think, again, that the construction of that road, <coughs> if I were to butter that, when that was good, is that going to be a construction of that going to be a requirement? And if so, when? <coughs> that would make a difference to me as a butter up to the north. To the chair, yeah, Mike. two questions. One, as we're proposing another public hearing or whatever, it will give Mr. Bentley time to at least contact KK and W to see when they might be able to uh, play with the water, okay? So because he'll have an idea. And the second thing is, uh, if there is legend, okay, does that uh, need to be blasted, or are you going to turn on it? Uh, some of it you can handle, some of it you can I, I, You know, you're in the construction business. Right. So the only reason I'm saying is, 
uh, uh, you may want to put a note in there to know that if it is blasted, that a butters will be notified if it has to go blasted. That, that goes with the, uh, with the blaster, the license yeah. blaster right. takes care well, of that. Well, let's put it this way. Sometimes they don't always do it that way. Okay? They have to I, go to I, fire, you know, fire I give you a perfect example. Just down the street, you've had blasting. I was never notified. And I'm within 500 feet. That's why I'm running my mouth. Yeah, okay. I love them. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's a good point, Marty, and we can make sure that it gets it gets in there. That's the only reason I'm bringing that up, because I know hammering, you can do a lot, but it okay. depends on the circumstance. Crystal balls don't shine and rocks don't move by themselves. If, can I ask you something? Sure. If, if on these phases, if and I don't know what phase three is, or the first phase we're going to do, I don't know if it's phase three or four phase. or what, what phase. But if, if it had 38 sites in it and we had problems getting there, usually you can go to the CO and you can say, we need that. 22 sites, can you come give us an approval for those 22 or 12 or something like that? And they usually can do that if we can get them ready, if they pass this code, and then work on the others as we're after we get the occupancy of those 10, 12, 20, whatever. Even though it's not the full phase, if it was 35 sites on whatever phase, could we, could we get the CO to do a, a permit those ones that we're doing? Without field adjustment, huh? You call it field adjustment. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, well, no, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, especially if you get into a phase and it, it looks to delay you from doing the whole thing. And you, you field adjustment. I, I don't. I don't have anything about that. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it, it's no I different. Think, Chip, if I said something about that green area with the thing, if I said, yeah, we won't, we won't touch that. Could you could you approve that with another public hearing? Because it's, it's just time. It's a time delay, and I, 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 as time goes on, and, and we've had the public hearing, and it was said that we didn't need another public hearing at the last one. I think. I and mean, you didn't discuss it at the last meeting. Or the one before <coughs> that we discussed. And, you know. I mean, I just like to get this thing rolling. It's been a few years, and you know. Do you, do you now, completely now, understand in, that. In fairness to this planning board, we're not the ones that pulled it off. The I, table pulled, I pulled it off because I couldn't move those triggers. I told, I, I tried to explain that some of those customers, and they were seasonals, and if, if your trailer was there and you had a grandfather clock that somebody gave you, and we move a trailer and we knock that grandfather clock off, we can't get in the trailer. We can't break into it. We can't get a hold of the tenant or the person that owns that trailer. We can't move that. And if we knock a TV or knock a clock off, you're not going to be very happy with us. And then I'm, I'm subject to big suits. You allowed them to leave it there. You should have insisted that they come up and move it. Well, we, that's, what we're going to do. that's what we're going to do this October. That's why we asked for that consent agreement to let you guys go ahead and give us this approval, hopefully in, today. In, in terms of, of the phasing aspect, one of the conditions of approval uh, says that you will not proceed to the next phase until you have provided documentation that the phase you're currently working on is complete and done. And the, and the CEO has signed off on it, staff review has signed off on it, and they've issued you the permits. So if you start working on phase three, which has 38 units, and you get through 22 of them and decide, well, you're going to work on something else, you violate the conditions of the permit. Okay, but how about if we, the, whatever phase you're talking about that has 38, if we get 12 done, and then we hit ledger, it's, it's going to be more time consuming, and we do all the, the fire hydrant, the pond, all the things, that, the gate, the necessities, uh, can we just get the 12 approved? I'm just throwing yes. a hypothetical yeah. number. I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. That's field adjustment. Well, no, I, I, I understand phase. that. Yeah. I'm simply saying, and, and I don't have but a problem with that. But we can't start phase four. Right, right. If you're wrong that three, we won't start phase four. Uh, uh, and if there was right. some reason we couldn't build finish phase three, we'd come back here and have, have to resubmit and right. have Rick do yeah. all the work and all that. If, you know, if it was just crazy. Less. We're only going six inches or eight inches deep with water. It's, it's summertime water. 
sewer and, and we put pumps in and all that stuff so it's you know it, you can get around the ledge problem but it, you do have to hit some of the ledge and if there's an outcrop to get a road in there properly or whatever you know but it so looks assuming like that it was way through the ledge or or some other unforeseen circumstance i wouldn't have a problem with that i would only I mean, have a problem with that if you just decided after 22 units that yeah. You know, I, I want to get a permit to occupy those 22 units now, even though there's still more. And I'm, I just used 38 because I saw the number. I don't remember yeah, which right. it was in. But the hypothetical. Just, just so that, you know, okay, well, I've got 22 of them got done now, and I want to get them occupied, but I haven't finished. But I could finish it. I would, I would, have, I would see a problem with that. It's one thing to say you've run into ledge. Well, then why don't we just allow them to have a permit every time you finish the site? You can issue a permit for it. Well, no, because you're, you're saying that, that if he doesn't finish the phase, he can't go to the next one. So yeah, that's, so we wouldn't go to the next one. But but you're saying that you would end up going on to the next one, or you would no, not? No, no, no. The only way we would go to the next one is if we came back here with, with our engineer and said, right. you know, we can't, it's impossible to build these other 12 oh, okay. or 10 but or whatever. I apologize, I misunderstood yeah. what you were saying. But we just like to have the same thing at the same phase. The code uh, enforcement officer could come down and say, yeah, we, we built 20 sites or whatever it may be and get them occupied and then because they're going to be grass and hot top and deny whatever need is necessity according to... Right. Yeah, I don't I don't think that that would be a problem. Okay. I just misunderstood what That's you what I asked you. And, and what Bentley, I given some of the... I mean, I'm speak for myself, mm -hmm. Chair. Given some of the other issues we've had in town, I would very strongly suggest if you do run into situations like that, Please go talk to Jim or Ted, you know, to, to work to address them up front. I think it'll make it a lot less painful than just going in and, you know, us finding out two years later and then having to, That's to what go we through all the other parts of it. Right. They were accommodating to let us, you know, to okay. help us. If I could get to the chair, sorry, go ahead. When this was, I, I was, I was not on the board when when the first process started up and it stopped. When, when this, when, when it restarted, the construction road that runs through phase seven, what was originally presented is that that would be done relatively soon. Correct. And it would alleviate the need to use the tow road for nighttime storage of uh, construction vehicles and the, and the like. Um, and uh, what I wanted to ask, if I may, through the chair, Mr. Leiter or Mr. Mr. Warren, what, is there a definitive plan to build that road? Or my, my impression at the last meeting was they might not ever build that road. That was the impression I got. Um, so I, what, what, I honestly don't know exactly what you're asking, but the tote road is just used, it's not used, any of the materials coming in, coming in from Route 1, or 99% of them, unless something happens to be at my house, or I might have a load of stone left over, I might bring four or five bikes <coughs> down to the 980 or 988 or something like that with a big, you know, load up. But other than that, we're not bringing stuff in, it's all going in as we build from Route 1, as you can see the phases. It's going that way. It's not so we're not going to be bringing excessive material down the tote road. You see, the, the way it was presented to us originally was that you would be going through phase seven. You, you would build a road through phase seven, going out to the backside of your property, so the construction vehicles Department. would would use that we section don't, we don't even to bring do all the construction the vehicles back to me my shop or my house every night anyway. So we leave them. They're too expensive to run. They're too big. Too expensive. And it's fuel, it's time, it's money, and it's a lot of wear and tear on, on any any kind of steel track machines like a V8, 235, all the cat equipment. It's just, you know, it's just it's a very expensive thing. So we leave them right there on the site. That's what we do with all the other things. We didn't bring them back and forth. So we're not utilizing that tote road for daily. Uh, it's not the tote road. It, yeah, it's not the tote road. Mr. Light, I, I think this, this, can, you, can you point to the old road? This there? one right here, I think. We agreed that we don't need to build that anymore. This this construction access road. Right. This went from phase seven over to the. So yeah. So, yeah. so to clarify, the the intent is not to not to build that at all. 
Right. So where, where will the equipment be stored? Within the, on, on, within the, on the on the sites that we're working on. Okay. The in other words, if we if we did twelve, if, like I asked you, could we do twelve and then maybe get the CO to approve it? We'd put them on potential 13, 14, 15. Okay. Or wherever we happen to be working to finish site one. And if for some reason we couldn't finish site or whatever site it was of phase, we would go to the you know building inspector say this is impossible, come look at it and then we can tell you and then Rick can resubmit it and we change it around. Okay. We, we can be amicable okay. about the whole so thing. When it was originally given to us, it, yeah. it was presented that if you were going through seven, you were going to have a construction road going back out to your property where everything was going to be stored and it would be traveling back and forth. And we were concerned that it would be on the tilt road. If you're going to leave them on site, that alleviates that concern. Come fall when we're all done working, if, if, we, if we can't work in the winter, usually we can because, like I say, the utilities are shallow. <laughs> We can work all with it, and that's the ideal time for us to finish it up. But if, if we can't, we would bring the equipment back once and we'd be sitting there until we start it up again, completing okay. whatever the phase we happen to be on. Okay. I think it's... Marty, you had something? Well, it's a placeholder in case they decided to... I somebody yeah. called just, just a question on, on also for Bentley. In terms of the language of the findings of fact, and I haven't had a chance to review the language, but in terms of the phasing, um, just knowing how best laid plans, is, is the way that it's worded now, so you, um, you're working on a phase, and you complete that phase, and you want to keep moving, so you start the ne next phase. In other words, you're waiting to, to finish loam and seed and whatever, Jim's going to come over in a couple of weeks, but you want to move some material into the next phase. Does that prohibit him from even starting the next phase? In other words, just you're swapping material, starting to, to grub or move or something. I want to make sure you're not hamstrung. I don't think it. I don't think it's, it's him for the structure. I, I, I look at this and think that that's exactly what this says. The applicant shall not proceed to the next development phase until first providing documentation to the planning board of the project's compliance with the approved drawings and conditions of this permit, the regulations contained in section 929 and 9310, and all other pertinent sections of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance. I read that to say yes, he does not get to start the next phase. Uh, question to the chair. Okay. Start the phase or infrastructure? Infrastructure isn't necessarily. You're right. That's not the same thing. This says. This the is next what I'm phase. saying. Okay. That's infrastructure. If that's the case, that's fine. I mean, because we want to work on the infrastructure. This is also, you know, a draft condition of approval that is up Correct. to us to debate and modify as we see fit when that time comes. Correct. I mean, in my opinion, if it if it gets to that point and. Bentley wants to go in and do two phases at a time. I mean, phase four and seven, you know, or six and seven, you know, then I don't see, personally, I, I don't see what that issue would be at, you know, today. I, I don't either. I was asked about this ordinance, and when I right. read the ordinance, that's what it says. That's not the ordinance. ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry, not right. the ordinance, it's but this is, this is, these are the right. conditional use, conditions of approval, and when I read something that says the applicant shall not Proceed. Right. Take that to mean you're dead <clears throat> in the water and until that condition right. is met. And, and I also, I, I, I don't think that means you can, it, it, while you're waiting for uh, approval of uh, phase three, I don't think the way this is written, I don't right. think that that allows you to start doing right. grading or building a road or whatever through. Future phase yes. seven. The way the way it's written right now, right. I'm, I'm not. Right. We're, we're not having a debate right now, but but it, but it's a valid okay. point because I hear Rick over here going, "We'd like to change that." Well, infrastructure. Well, that's not. The minute you move a piece of equipment up from phase three to phase seven, you start doing work seven. at phase seven, whether it's with a shovel or a teaspoon. You're, you're doing work on that phase, and then you don't have the right to do that. Right. So that's a discussion that we can have. Right. But okay. also, I'm sorry, chair. Could, 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 could we, I'm sorry, with the utmost respect, Mr. Chairman, I, I asked a question about 15 minutes ago about the master plan approval and the, okay. and the, and the periodic reviews. Yep. Can, can, okay. can, let's, can, let's can, can the board, I, 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 I'm just one member of the board. 
I'm interested in what everybody else thinks about what you know, what that should look well, like. No, you're right. We got off, we got off onto a, a different tangent on that, and that, that's a valid point. What are your thoughts on it? Let's find out what what all of us think. You know, my, my 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 original proposal and, and actually was to, that we give a master plan approval, which covers a seven-year time period, um, and that there be um, a, a formal application process <coughs> at, at year three. Um, okay. And I guess I, I said it a little odd, so maybe, maybe it should be six years. Uh, um, one, one in the middle. I don't think that I think it is overly burdensome, and I don't think there's anything in the land use ordinance to support requiring a full application at the end of each phase. Okay. I, I think that is that's excessively burdensome on the applicant. And, um, however, I think the, the, the wording about the I, I, I don't I I I didn't understand why we while we were talking about it, what the, the review constituted if it wasn't an extension of the three year review. Well, the three year review like we would do with other conditional use applications. And, you know, they've prepared the documents, they've prepared the drawings to, to detail what they're going to do through the, the process now. I don't know if we need to do a, you know, full-blown application review after three years. I think, you know, what is on here, look at traffic, look at the site to make sure, you know, what they said they're going to do, they're doing, and you know, we do a, a fairly thorough review and, and uh, either don't let them proceed or do let them proceed. My, 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 my two concerns are, are compliance. Yeah. And this applicant does not have a good history with that. Uh, and the even bigger one is, is traffic. Um, because I, 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 as I said before, I've never seen a traffic study. I thought it was worth the paper. No, no offense to the applicant, but I just think um, I think this many campsites on Route 1 is going to create a lot of traffic problems, potentially. Honestly, I don't think there's that much. because I, I, I understand. Because yeah, they, you know, they come in with a camera, and, and, they say they but a car doesn't go out or a motorcycle. The, the, the bottom line is if it doesn't create a problem, that's great. Yeah. And, and Chip, in my experience and understanding of, of tra traffic studies, is that they really focus on peak hour. And, you know, you get into to fast food restaurants, Dunkin' Donuts, you know, pharmacies, things uh, like that, that I, I really understand. get into those level of impacts. Um, this, I, I don't see. And did you I think, see, I think did you volume see, did wise. I see the traffic backed up on Route 1 last Memorial Day weekend? Because I did. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not saying there's not heavy traffic on Route 1. No, I have the, the traffic lined up a quarter mile to turn into this campground. Roger. Yeah, I'm in favor of three year. Yeah, Marty? We'll reveal it yeah, after three, but travel, but not a full blown application. Yeah, exactly. I would kind of like to propose but, uh, but also an adjustment the chair, to that for you. But also yeah, through the chair, before we, I think we did have the, the desire to read this instead of, because it was just proposed to us tonight, the full conditional. Yep. I mean, uh, well, we, we yeah. usually get the conditions of, of approval at the meeting that, that night. But, but I, as, I as with all the fine lining of of uh, uh, this, that, and everything else, I think we should turn around and have a chance to review it before we turn around and. Uh, uh, oh, we're not voting on it tonight. No, but I'm just saying. Yep. No, I I, I understand. 
I would I would like to propose kind of a uh, an adjustment to, to the three-year plan. And instead of a three-year plan, say after the third phase, there are six phases that are going in there. Phase one is already in there. There are six more. There are six more phases. Uh, what we call phase one is this one. So we have two through. So you've got two through six, two through seven. So there are six more. I would like to say that if put in three phases, and then at the end of each phase, you're going to have the CEO and staff review go out. Take a look at it, make sure it's as built. But at the end of three phases, you come back here. Assuming that, that they say it's okay, then instead of doing a three year plan, you come back here. Because you may be able to get three phases done in a year, or it may take you four years to get three right. phases. But we're looking at saying the overall permit time okay. is seven years, seven. six years? Seven. Uh, seven years. Okay, thank you. We're saying the overall permit time is seven years. You get three phases done, you come back here. We review everything, we make sure that there's no violations, and then you continue on and you'll be able to finish off the next three. Could, could, I think that makes sense. Mr. Kanan, can I, uh, Absolutely. I, 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 I like your idea, but could we make it the, the sooner of three yes. years or three phases? Right. Okay. okay. That's what, yeah. Yep. Whichever, comes, whichever comes first. Either three years right. or three phases, whichever comes first. We're comfortable with that. I yeah. think it makes, it makes all kinds okay. of sense. I mean, our crystal ball don't shine. But I mean, we're talking about this, this is at least paying people around the point. I think we're talking about a review. I see no okay. reason to, but, to have the applicant the jump The conditions through. of the, this phasing review in, in note four would, would take place after right. whatever comes yeah. first, the end of phase three or three years. The end of the third phase. Yeah, I, I see no reason to make the applicant jump through the hoops of having to do a completely new application and, and all of the work okay, that is involved and, with that. And I do think we would have to have a sidewalk, uh, not a sidewalk, a uh, public hearing, just to, to make sure that things are, are still kosher with the that, neighbors. Now that's something that's not in here and hasn't been discussed before. I don't disagree I don't with like you. I'm just saying. That but, that, but that's part of our review process. Correct. Okay, so, so it includes a public hearing. May. Including public hearing. May. Yeah. It, it, it may. may turn out that there that there are no problems, in which case we're right. okay. I mean, move, move on. To the I, next I, 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 I like the idea of reserving the right. Right. The board of reserving the right to, to do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, you know, you're processing a lot of things, and I thought I heard Mr. Um, uh, Warren say that. You know, if there was, um, you know, I think there's only one about it that has a concern. We're not here to try to slow the process up. We just want to be heard. And we've been here twice. But I think he mentioned something to the effect that if, and I may not have heard you correctly, but if he was willing to um, not do any cutting or just minimal cutting in that buffer zone, and that would satisfy the neighbors, you know, and alleviate no. our concern. You're, you're, you're talking about the, it's not, the it's not, it's not a buffer zone right oh, now. You're talking about the woods yes. north of the tote road. That's right. The tote road and the property yeah. line. I mean, that's all we're concerned yeah. about. If that's your concern, that you can put it to rest. Now. If that's all it is, and Chip wanted the same thing, so. We no, I, 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 it, 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 it wasn't me. I was on the site walk, and the abutter was very clear in, in their request. Mr. White, I just want to make make clear. It, it, so, it's not me personally. Okay, can I ask you something else then, Chair? And, yes. and the attorney, if we if we agree to that, that should alleviate a public hearing because this is the only person that was you're the only people that are concerned about a public. No, but we can't speak for others. Right, and that's right. what that's what I was just right. talking okay. about. But I, I don't know. We, I mean, I think as a board, we have a responsibility to notify the, the public in a larger sense and invite the public here to comment, which in over a year has not been done, other than the the sidewalk. So, I mean, it's, it's my suggestion that we maintain the public hearing on the 8th. I think it's great that the two tables there, you know, I think it will make things go a lot easier on the 8th, but, you know, I, I think we still need to. I, 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 I want to just emphasize it. I think what Jamie's saying is I think we could have a public hearing as short as the first two we had this evening if the application specifically states that that, Green that, area. that, 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 that area between the tote road and the property line um, be 
be left alone and not be harvested. Okay. If that satisfies... Hey, it's not a question to satisfy yeah. me. I, I, yeah, I well, think it that satisfies would, my neighbors. Yeah. yeah. And, Why not? And that goes a long way into our, you know... Yeah. And, and, and let me just be clear. I'm a tree farmer. So I, 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 I want to be able to cut trees, and I don't want any government telling me I can't cut trees on my land, okay? Um, but, and that's specifically why I asked about the acreage. We're, we're, we're not talking about an economic hardship. Mm -hmm. At least okay. in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. May I be very nice for a moment, please? So, my name is Bob. Uh, Clark Semper Tarrannis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Sorry. Bob Klein. I'm here, here with Patty Warren. Uh, and this is sort of a procedural observation that's intended to be helpful. Uh, and I don't know exactly everything that's happened in the sequence of events, but if I liken the withdrawal of the application to essentially being a request to table, then my understanding would be, under the general procedural rules, would be that that would be the time at which you put the applicant, and, and that's discretionary, <coughs> which you could say, and, or the CEO could say, we're not going to entertain the tabling, and if you want to withdraw an application to stage, then you start anew with a new application. Now, it may be more streamlined because you're coming back a second time, but that would be, because when I, when I read your uh, site plan review ordinance, we're talking about you know, 10.6.3, 10 subpart 3, it says we have a trigger for the public hearing. And as we all know, the trigger for the public hearing is within 30 days after completion, of, after the application is deemed to be complete. So all I'm saying in terms of fairness and future uh, would be the discretion ideally so that so the public as well as the applicant are treated on a, with a level playing field, which would be if we're going to be at a stage where we may be considering additional public hearings and if that's an area of concern to the board, which may be valid, then it would be good to sort of communicate that in the front and sort of say, this is so new or the changes you're proposing are so large we feel in good conscience we should not allow a tabling. That's within our discretion. We can reject that. Okay, so I just, just want to point that out because that, okay. that's sort of a concern with what I'm picking up in terms of how this one has played out. And I know Bentley feels frustrated to some degree at being the applicant, bearing the expense, and then sort of saying, and then he's eager to get going uh, with the construction. And, and, and I know that's not an intention to delay it, but the practical effect is to have that out. Okay, so thank you very much for hearing me out on that. I appreciate it. Anything else, gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. When was the applicant completed, uh, considered completed? I would have to go back in and review the minutes. I don't know if we've ever technically deemed it complete. That's why I just well, threw, uh, threw we'll the, the we'd question. Have, we'd have to go back for a look at the At history. some point, you know, we would have deemed it complete. And then get the was, findings of fact, yeah. I, I, right. I'm not sure that you all ever got to that point because I, I, I it think was, it was withdrawn we before it was deemed complete. It was submitted on February 23rd uh, of 2017. Right. We did, we did not deem it. Right, well, it, it's point. changed every time. That's why my question is through the chair and through the lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good I mean, question, I, because it turned out if it hasn't been deemed complete, then turn out we're not going over our threshold. But procedurally, I think we would have we deemed should it complete have. before we had a site walk. No. Yes. We usually do a site walk. I don't think so. No, I think Jamie's right. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah, I, I think we, we just simply have to go back. But I think, I think uh, yeah, you raise Mr. Klein. Point. Yes. I think you, Mr. Klein raises a valid point. Uh, and we do need to pay, uh, I need to pay closer attention to that to make okay. sure that that takes place. Right. Well, it, it, given the circumstances, I mean, I think the delay was warranted, but for that to be better communicated. Yep. But also, too, at okay. the same time after the sidewalk, we had to go play so we now uh, consent you agreements, also lawyers, and... The findings of fact. Uh, again, these... these will be subject to modification. They may or may not be modified, yeah. uh, but that will take place on the 8th. I mean, we'll work through Rick and yeah. we'll work with yes. Pat yeah. to Absolutely. try to incorporate yeah. what I think we heard tonight. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Rick, Rick, could, could you could, could you share it? Could, yes. could, could you get clarification on the, the construction road? It, 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 
If, is it or is it? If, if it's not going to be constructed, it's we not, take it off the drawing. This, was, this, is, this is coming off the drawing. I think it's already okay. been taken off. It's no. still there on the That comes off the drawing. That comes off. So, yeah, that no, would, no, would, no road there. No if that's not in, intended, that I would come off the drawing. I, I just... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, to be clear. Okay. okay. Anything else, gentlemen? Excuse me. I, I, I regret that no one had put in the new one for a little bit before we released. Okay. Hearing nothing else, we'll see you on the eight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next item up is motor land. Conditional use pre application. It's a proposal to modify and approve conditional use permit to include field changes, including increased wetlands, filling, propane tanks and location, increased parking area. Modifications to the approved detention basin and relocated utilities at Motorland Showroom and Service Center located at 2564 Portland Road, tax map to Lot 1 in the BI District. Motorland LLC is the owner and applicant, and Paul Gadbury is the applicant's agent. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I need to raise a question uh, based on the conversation with the 34 officer. You can keep it. I've got one more item. You can keep it up there. We have issues. Is that Rick's? Yes. Oh, but he's coming back. Yeah. 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 All of those buildings. Who owns the land and the buildings? Who, do, who's, who, who is the owner of record of um, all of that property? Richard Prentice or Tim handle that. You are the owner of why, record. Why have I heard from the code enforcement officer that another company actually owns the building on the, on the northeastern side of the property? That's right. That's good. I mean, to your, your question, your question is to make sure there hasn't been a, essentially, a, a subdivision or a condominium ising of the lot. What, what I was, the impression I got from the code enforcement officer was that a, another corporate entity owned that building. And but Tim, you're, you're refuting that? I own the land. See, a building can be leased still by being owned. Away by the, so it's I mean, not no, constituted I mean, no, subdivision. No de facto condominium lies in the interior of the buildings or anything. Sidewalk. Now we're here to discuss the sidewalk and the wishes of the board in regards to the uh, change that were made to the site um, and get an amended site plan approved by the board 
so that we can come back in front of the board for what we call the third phase, which the third phase will be um, to uh, change the courtyard, add some seating, add some uh, landscaping, um, have a showroom for um, people to come in and move the cars. And so can't move forward to that phase. Um, I'm not really showing that phase at this time. We did come back to the plan. It seemed like six months ago when I said, well, the culvert was in place and all of a sudden uh, there were violations, so everything came to a halt. Um, so we really haven't gone forward to that third phase. But ultimately, that's what we're trying to get. Um, these are just kind of the architect's rendering of what they want to do here. They want to do a raised uh, uh, patio over the septic system, um, landscapers do some sort of patio blocks, um, so to provide access to the it's not a museum or whatever you want to call it. Yes. Recreational Children. facility. Recreational facility. Um, so that's what we're ultimately trying to get to. Again, my plan doesn't reflect any of that at this time because obviously we can't talk about this at this time because we still have the approved amended site plan chain approved. So right now we're trying to see what the plan would add at the site walk in regards to <coughs> that were made on um, that one approved previous approved site plan and then those changes were we didn't see it yet but we, we made a concrete pad to the rear of the building to handle the AC units that wasn't in place that's something that we will or we need to handle uh, as part of the amended site plan and we do have this culvert in place um, which originally we discussed it was going to be a ditch um, there was an existing culvert in place, but everybody at that time seemed to agree to take out the existing culvert, let it be a man-made ditch. Um, so in a sense, they basically extended the existing culvert that already replaced it and added a new longer culvert. Um, the gas propane tanks were at this location. I guess which probably would have been a nightmare to run into, I'm not really sure, but they elected to put the propane tanks here, run the gas lines back to the existing buildings and the existing buildings and just um, and then gas lines were already installed. Um, they, did, they did pay the little extra payment, so during the initial or, or, or during the third phase, I did show those changes when we came back from the plan book because I would say I always try to do an as-go prior to trying to uh, move on to another phase. So during the as built this additional payment of 700 square feet was paid. In all fairness, it was gravel to begin with. This site, again, was all gravel. And so, same thing with this. This was pay, additional payment was added to the existing, beyond the existing plan, and then a little bit of payment right here, which I guess makes some sense, but it's just kind of a, an erosion control nightmare in that area. But, so, from what I understand, we can't move over phase three until we get the amended site plan approved. Once that's approved, and I'm assuming signed, um, they can get their occupancy permit, I guess is what I'm understanding at that point. They at least put cars in the building. Um, and then we'll be turning this thing around as quickly as we can to come up with the phase three to show just the landscaping plan and how we're going to revise this area to accommodate what they're trying to get for the look and for the access to the, show, to the showroom. So, from what I understand, we're still made until the board says, even though it's an after the fact, I know the board's uh, seen a lot of after the fact projects, what are the board's wishes so that I can make the plan fit what the board wants so that we can uh, get an oxy permit for that building. Rich, can I? Absolutely. Can you suggest that we you know, Tad's done a good job of yeah, laying online. out everything, and, and we just systematically walk through and yep. Yep. provide some feedback. And yeah. well, can I see a copy that it would be nice if something like that was sent to me prior to the meeting? But these are these are confidential <laughs> staff. We got, oh, <laughs> well, we got all of these <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Not, not well, intended for good. public uh, oh. viewing. Okay, good. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, to the chair, may I make a comment? Yes. Before me. Uh, uh, at the sidewalk, Mr. Lowry made a comment, which I 
want to emphasize, which is that any, any one of the changes uh, in, in and of itself isn't huge, a showstopper, um, but two and a half pages of significant changes, or two and a quarter, or whatever, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the, in my, to, to me, it's the accumulation of just completely disregarding the plan that was approved and doing something different without coming back to the board to ask it's okay if we do something totally different. That's the problem. I, I, I applaud Mr. Lauder's suggestion that we go one by one through these and discuss them. Um, but it, 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 to my mind, it's the cumulative. We just built what we felt like building and came back and, and the applicant's representative asked for approval of, of new things on the property saying well this is this is what we we don't see what to prove this is what we don't we're going to take these one at a time uh, one thing that yeah, I don't think is here um, you may want to add as a thought elevation say if I remember correctly or anything else when we were coming off Route 1 the front area has been elevated up to possibly uh, not need the drainage ditch or anything else but along the way I'm not sure what you're talking about but I guess with the chair maybe well, okay, where the front of the, the front where they turn out put in a couple new garage doors and everything else for right around there, right around that area. Originally it was more flatter instead of turning on bringing it up elevation wise because when we were on the sidewalk, we were looking at uh, it was about that much higher. I mean, uh, you know, Marty, that entire roof. Sheds into where the retention pond was supposed okay. to be. And we discussed that on the side. Okay, then. So we, when we look at this, we start off with the very first issue, 15 inch culvert. The culvert wasn't supposed to be there. Instead, it's been put into the water course at the rear of the property. Wetland area was filled in. We don't know if the pipe is big enough to handle any kind of a storm. I mean, obviously, you know, if, you, if, if it rains like it has the past couple of days, but if we got a 25-year storm or, or a 50-year storm, we have no idea if that uh, culvert will handle it. Certainly, that's an engineering calculation. I hadn't bothered doing the engineering calculation because if you guys tell me to take the culvert out, I'm just wasting my client's money. So, if you guys tell me that, if you can prove to me that it will handle and Taz is going on now with 15, 75 years storm events. I certainly, you know, the ordinance in the court required that, obviously. Um, can I run a 20, was it 15, 75 years from event? Certainly. What was the um, size of the culvert? It was 15 and bridge. Was it? Well, so, so my, I mean, so I don't know how it works, I didn't have to analyze it. Right. My so, issue yeah. with, with the placement of the culvert, and, I, and my take when I probably, when I made that comment that, that Chip referenced is, you know, the applicant, the proposal to us was to remove the culvert. Personally, I didn't have an issue with the existing culvert that was there if you wanted to leave it. Right. You know, it's it's there, leave it. But now that it has been reconstructed, the the issues that I have and the concerns that I have is during you know the way it was put in, you, you've got a significant erosion risk at both the upstream and downstream end of the culverts by how it was installed. I mean, almost perpendicular to the water course. It is perpendicular um, to the water course. Right. looking at photo. So, you know, to me, that was, you know, 
now. And I don't know if it was an effort to stay out of the wetland or what the, the logic was during, during that installation, but it, it didn't, uh, you know, it didn't take into account the, the, the course of the stream very well. Frankly, it, it, my take, and I could be wrong, is that the putting the culvert in and, well, I actually think that this was the voters' representative said this on the sidewalk, was that the, the culvert was put in so that they could bring the heavy trucks in with the HVAC equipment for the construction we haven't approved yet. Uh, and while it wasn't said, it seemed pretty clear that that's why the retention pump wasn't well, built either. Well, to me, the retention pond, the detention basin, was more for access. The culvert was more for that footprint behind the building to put the concrete pad. Right. So, I mean, okay. so, so, so the concrete pad. So, so my, my suggestion to you would be to determine and decide what you're going to do with the culvert to make it form into the, the existing water course. And um, you know, I'll leave that to your engineering creativity, Paul. Sure. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and slides the cost and just check the calculations. And yeah, I mean, if, 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 if it's, wonky, it's, it's private wonky. property, you know, I, if it's undersized, and it, hit, and it historically was undersized and nothing was over there, it may have never caused a problem. I think it's it's worth at least checking to make sure if it does, you know, exceed its banks in a large storm event, is that something that the the landowner can tolerate? You know, we're not, it's not if it was coming from the other direction, the, you know, the water course was flowing more to the southwest instead of the northeast, then I'd be concerned because you're backing it up on Correct. somebody else's property. Exactly. Here, you know, yeah, you're, the, you're impacting you're just yourself. You want to make sure that it doesn't breach the culvert right. and actually go over the culvert and cause more road Exactly. Cost. You yeah. want to make sure that yep. it floods. The, and it's actually probably a good thing for the neighbor. If you're going to flood, if it floods just his property, it doesn't flood anybody else's property. Not a bad thing. It's a control structure. It helps. Yep. Uh, relieve the pressures downstream for other culverts and other property. But it certainly has to be able to not breach the culvert and just erode this area back into right. somebody else's wetland. Right. So okay. certainly we will look at that. I haven't done it yet because yeah. the original calculations there wasn't a culvert there, so mm -hmm. I never looked at it. To the direction. Yeah, Mark. If I remember correctly, when we first looked at it, we said there wasn't going to be a culvert there. Also, the reason why, because so that there wouldn't be any access to the back side of that because it turned out uh, there was like an old possibly road or something other that went up up back. That's why there well there wasn't a culvert. I think there. that's why that little culvert was there, my right. right. To get to that. Well I'm just I'm just going by memory. I mean uh <coughs> they had you know that's why uh, you know we had discussed that. I mean, uh, May I make a suggestion? <laughs> the, the original water course was roughly 10 feet this direction here. The angle mm -hmm. is virtually the same. But you've intersected the water course in a, in a different place so that it, it is flowing in. I don't remember it flowing in like that. And granted, we didn't spend a lot of time on it because it was going to be taken out. But I would find it hard pressed that a new culvert, if Paul had designed that culvert from the start, that he would have he would have situated it like that. I would be very shocked to have to hear that. I'm not sure about the situation issue, but as I mentioned the last month, the ditching the ledge started coming up right away. So, you know, I put the pipe in there to accommodate what what the field conditions um, required. I also mentioned I'll rip the thing out of there and we'll go back to a, an open ditch if you want. I think then it just becomes an issue of how much, how far off the corner of that pad would you like the open ditch? And 
we will get into the pipe thing. I don't think anybody feels we have to have a pipe there. Um, at the time, it, it made the most sense to put it I in mean, and, and do the if construction. You had, if you've got enough room to put to put a pad in and, and gray it back down, then you know that's that's you know we're in a situation where you know. The, the bulk of the plans that come to us are a proposal by the applicant to do things. And we're in the position to then review and comment and, you know, criticize, in a, in a way, critique the, the plan. I mean, now we're in a sort of a field change situation where, you know, we've, at least from my perspective, I'm not opposed to a culvert right there, right? There was one there before. I'm not opposed to one. I'm just thinking. I'm just saying the way that it was installed, in my opinion, is is not the best, the best installation given the course of the stream. It's not good. So my right. my Problem. issue. Well, it wasn't engineered. We're gonna no. call it a course of the ditch. Or whatever. You know. <laughs> but, yeah, I, and I get it. I mean, but, you know, right. When when I look when I look at this plan, I'll be honest. With you. When I look at this plan, we went out to the sidewalk. We did the sidewalk. And I look at where that culvert runs, and it runs underneath the pad that you wanted to put in, That's which 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 right tells now. me whether whether this is accurate or not. But the fact that that culvert runs through where that pad was supposed to be tells me that the culvert was put there deliberately to support the pad, so that because otherwise you would have had a ditch there and you couldn't have put the pad in there. Oh, and I mean, to me, that's I know. an issue. That's the contract yeah. answer on that. Yeah. One, but Yes. I don't think they're disputing that. Well, that's the problem I have with it. It wasn't that they weren't follow it, it they weren't following the plan, no question. Right. But they were doing something deliberately to set themselves up to do something else sure. later. Sure. We need it for the pad, which we haven't done. The pipe needs to be straight. So picking up where the open ditch was. And getting it where the other pipe was, the other pipe was about 10 feet closer yeah. here, if I remember correctly. So, wait a minute. Straight line. Let, me, let me take exception to that. Because you can, and I know they cost money, but you can put in a, a you know, a drain manhole closed up and effectively reorient that pipe, that culvert, correct? Um, if you want me to move it around in there, yeah. yeah I'm not. I mean, are you, if you're suggesting that, I... Yeah. No, no, it's Trump not, and that's what I was saying. This is not up for us to redesign this. This is up for, uh, this is, in my opinion, for us to provide feedback to you guys on what our concerns are, right? So, I think you're hearing that, at least personally, I have a concern over the inlet and outlet conditions of that culvert. The orientation. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here. I don't think we need to, you know, belabor the point of the fine points of the design on how you are going to alleviate that. Right. That's up to you and Paul and the owner to get together and do that outside of of a public meeting. I'm suggesting to eliminate a violation and move this thing along so this isn't an issue. That I just recreate the ditch and just get past the corner of the proposed pad and have it an open ditch like it used to be. It's just been moved and it's going to take a little different shape to get around the corner of that pad. If anyone's concerned about why the pipe's underneath the pad and that's a you know a concern, let's get it out of there. No, I, 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 think, I think that's not the... the it's just the, 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 the issue is it really looks like maybe unfair improvisational construction I, I, improvisational it, no engineer sat down and figured out what the water flow is going to be like what the proper alignment I'm not a, an engineer but I could look at the inlet and outflow of that culvert and it it's not at normal angles to the, the water course I don't know what happens in a big rain but uh, I know that when water tries to turn the corner, you get erosion. So I put river wrap and filter fabric in there to stop that. Having done this kind of stuff all my life, maybe that would take care of it. But if you but feel you it doesn't, look, we'll ask you. You're, you're, a, you're a contractor, not an engineer, right? <laughs> I've worked with these fellows 
probably 40 some years, so I have a pretty good idea what they need. I'll be glad to step back and let him design it and check it out. I mean, so, is that the inlet or the outlet? I, 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 I mean, then you may have done I, some I things. Think, I don't I recall think, any this, any heavy I duty rip rat outlet detection when we were there. So that's, I mean, the, the, yes, the, that's the outlet there. Four-inch crush stone around it. Four-inch crush stone or four-inch rip rat? Four-inch crush stone. I think that's another picture of the outlet. There's no velocity to it. I think you know. If the board's okay with mm -hmm. either direction, we can decide amongst right. ourselves. Right. That's, that's what Jamie said. I think that makes it you know, whether we want to fix the ditch or, right. or, or, or do the calculations, mm -hmm. modify the inlet, modify the outlet, you know, so that it's stable. I, I think the board's okay either way as long as we can right. modify the inlet outlet exactly. and make it a stable. Yeah. Yep. So I think we can decide on what's, how best to do that. Um, maybe it'll come down to what's financially more feasible for them, but Obviously, we're running. If they use the culvert, um, we'll either modify the unit, we'll modify the unit, cut a culvert back, make sure we're not running perpendicular to it, you know, for erosion problems, and yeah. obviously put standard erosion control sediment, you know, out there. And please know, you know, if you guys have future plans, which you, you obviously do, I have no issue with you guys taking those into account when you, you go through sure. your, your phase. You know, that is, I mean, perfectly logical to me. Absolutely. So, you know, I think we have a consensus with that, hopefully. So, um, yeah, so, so, the, board so the bottom line like, is okay. it, engineer it yep. right. okay. correctly okay. And, 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 and do the, the stormwater study that, yep. that the town planner suggested. Sure, that's not a problem as far as I'm concerned. Is that Could right? Should we do that in a new application? Well, no, this will be part of your... Upgrade your, your new application. You know, your no, application. That would be part of your existing proposal to us that we're hearing right now. Correct. It, it's, it's part of what you're going to need to get a certificate of occupancy on what's been built already. And then for, day, for, the next day, we're not, not even starting with the right. This two's been taken care of. So, the propane tank is relocated in the front of the new building. So, so propane we, tanks are in the back. Item numbers, where we got oh, yeah. item. First one, the 15 inch call. Okay, thank right. you. Now we're looking at the propane tank. All right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do we leave the tanks where they where they are? Where we saw them on the on the site? No, I thought you said you were moving them. Uh, they go, no, they they they, they, they were they, here. They were there. Yeah, they rented the there, and they, they they installed them here. And we plumbed it all. Uh, which which plumbed again all is plumbed. is clearly related to bringing trucks along the north side of the building. Yeah, to, to maintain that access. Right. Right. And it wasn't feasible to take and pick up that center building for propane, having a way over on the other side. Okay. Which I think Paul probably wasn't told or nobody thought about when he came and in there first. Right. Uh, basically, um, I'm not a propane expert, so as long as it needs codes, I'll put it wherever the contractor tells me to put it. Right. So that's why I went there. But anyway, so. Are we okay with the so what are your thoughts on the program? I mean, uh, my assessment of, of that and looking at the plan, if I'm seeing it correctly, is that the wetland impacts are fairly minimal. And to, you know, to my understanding, you know, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, we're not anywhere close to a threshold for requiring a, no. you know, a DEP permit or anything like that, that that change would have, square feet right, that that change right. would have, have triggered. No. And it's propane, it's not like it's oil, obviously. You know, right and it's on, I mean, on oil tanks. Was it, I mean, was it on a, what kind of pad was it's it on? It's just the stone. Crushed stone, stone. stone. Yeah. stone, yeah. Comfortable even get there? Okay. You. That's not a big issue. It's kind of better once you do one. It's probably yeah. better back there anyway. Right. Really. Right. I mean, how do we? Actually, it's out of the way. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's per se. That part's out of the way. So I mean, uh, it's less chances of uh, uh, getting bumped and boo booed and playing bang bang than anything else, except for possibly the snow loads coming off the building 
of when shedding. Just far enough. I'm, ju I'm, just, I'm just throwing out as a steel building owner of knowing <laughs> what happens. I think the requirement was 20 feet. That's what it is. Okay. I'm just... Oh, I agree totally. you got to consider that. Well, if, the other issue on here uh, is, is down in the middle of the page. It talks about the proposed propane and, and electrical lines and making sure that uh, the propane lines are running underneath traffic areas. Uh, we need to make sure that, the, that those are low bearing. That's all. Uh, Champagne Energy and myself went all through that and we got about 30 inches of depth and they got nice heavy pipe going down through the trench. Okay. They're totally comfortable with it. Can we get uh, some documentation? Some, some, some kind of documentation of that thing. Um, that they were involved in it? Or yeah. What was yeah. It? Yeah. Which that you try it, to it says it's uh, third from the bottom. Okay. I mean, and again, even if it's even if it's a a um, you know, it, if it's a uh, you know, no, in, not necessarily in the plan, but a uh, item in the plan, you know, that Paul has prepared that is for propane under a, a vehicular access, you know, yeah, drive. Just, just like a note or something. That's well. What I'm thinking is a uh, a detail in oh, the plan okay. that you know Paul has specified that you know it's going to be buried at such a depth, of, you know, backfilled with such material and. But also, and too, appropriate. it'll show it so in case yeah. uh, Deep or anybody else may that, you know, so we don't step up and play in the future, not necessarily you guys. Quite frankly, though, for me to do that, I would have to have them excavate the lines so I could actually physically locate those lines so I can actually certify the depths. Okay. See what was in there? Yeah. And so, so or, or the contract can have to write a letter saying that he installed those and he believes. I guess I'm, I was. I, I would be able to do that. I was meaning it more not for for you to. You know, sort of. I think probably yeah, champagne would be better. I was mean, thinking more of a detail that would show. I'm not gonna know. Right. Yeah. Well, no, understand. Yeah. You, you say champagne's down. Uh, yes. Right. Then something from champagne's clarifying yeah. 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 conditions. Yeah. I, they're the installers. They have the uh, warning. Tape over top, right? Right. Like okay. the both sides. Right. Yeah. They they know the, their codes for right. Uh, right. Even though it it's there, but to, it just kind of gives them that game plan. Yeah. Yeah. Before the sand on top. Mm -hmm. Before the sand over on top. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Soft shell, so it has cushion. Anything else on the propane tank, guys? No. Because I think that the, the, the tank takes the care of the, the propane and electrical lines, which is why yeah. I brought them together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Now, okay. the electrical lines, are they all underground? This is a proposed electrical line. So is that the one you're talking about? I'm just looking at the proposed new propane and electrical lines. It says, yeah, this one here, this is going to be for, it's not installed yet. That'll be for bringing power in the drawing right now. And say, we're going to come in off this pole on the drawing until this bring into that building for what they need for the use. Yeah. So it hasn't been installed yet. Right. We're actually going to install new water line, but again, that's the next phase. So when I come back to my plan, that won't be there, and that won't be there, and I apologize that they're there today, but I was just trying to get the boards feeling on to the violation. So, we come back, there won't be any new proposed items uh, until we get this thing, violation taken care of, and then we'll show again the new lines and the new water lines and the future, which is right. so we can start the third point then. We, yes, the, yeah. I, we, we've already talked about the concrete pad. So right. Correct. That, we can skip through and go to the new door location. The fact that there's a door that doesn't belong there in the building. Oh, yeah. The, the door doesn't belong there. You know, uh, during the, uh, when they gave the building layout, there was no door shown in the original building layout. So obviously I didn't show a door on my plan and access to it. Um, I didn't, didn't, didn't need it based upon the original usage. I don't know if the door is necessary no. for the for the use. So again, I'll have to check to the contractor and the applicants um, if that's necessary. You're talking about the rear fire door? Right. Yeah. I'm sure it involved with the architect. 
his input. To put it in again. All right. And I believe it's happened through the course of the the design. Well, yeah, because what happens is you don't have your You've got design. a door. You've got a door. Now we need access from the door. You know, that's for emergency egress. We don't want to dump it into a, a stormwater feature. Well, right. and, and, and that's... I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, but but the, 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 the significant issue with the door, to me, is that it opens on where the stormwater retention bottom is supposed to be. And that's why in this plan, which again, we'll have to deal with that, I have a culvert connecting the two ponds, which I'm okay with. Um, having some sort of, whatever walkway you want to have, we can pave it if you want it to, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, at least get them away from the building. But yeah. it does, does why, why is the door there? If it's only storage, it doesn't be there. I, I don't know. It wasn't there originally. You know, quite frankly, you know, you don't spend, uh, I don't know, the cost of engineering plans, $20,000 to do an engineering set of plans for planning board approvals. So a lot of times you have yeah. a plan that you think you've got the right plan, but when it goes out to design by architects, they should probably be looking at the site plan so they know do it, but I don't know what happened. Why is the door? I, I can't tell you. But, you know, I guess those things seem to I'm sure happen. I'm run by the building inspector. And then the architect was handling that stuff at that point to, to meet whatever was going on at that point. And yeah, there's one architect, they look at the plan, they call, they say, we can do it here, can I access the site? I, who knows why? No, I don't know. So here's a question. I ran into the Oscar song, okay? And you know how many years ago we played with my building? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, there's no boiler room or anything else there. Okay. The only reason where I had to come back and play changes or anything else because it was by fire code and it needed an egress because there was something also to it at the same time. I was coming from upstairs, the loft, down. Otherwise, there would have been no door there at all. I mean, so, uh, and I guess I got to go back to the applicant if that door is not required. Close it I mean, off. again, it, to, to me, it's sort of like it, it's it's just like the cult. If it's not there, you don't need it. Take it fill out. it in. You 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 know, put the pond in just like you had it. If it is needed, okay, then you know, propose why. propose something back to us that that accommodates that means of egress from the building. And, and the retention pond is sized correct. Oh, yes, that's in a way. Now these tanks are going. I have. Plenty of opportunity to yeah. increase the size of the pond yeah. to make it work. Uh, I don't see that being an issue. Again, I, I ran some preliminary numbers, uh, but again, I, we're at a halt because now. Well, this, so, this, so that brings up. Can, can I? Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So, you know, here we have a. I'm not sure exactly how many square foot building. You can't read that uh, right in there. It's 60 by 2 but, cents, so you know, I don't know, you know, a roof that's going to shed stormwater off in a pretty rapid fashion right out to an a, a budding property in a very uncontrolled manner because the pond hasn't been put in yet. Correct. So at, at least per, at the sidewalk. I don't know what you've done, uh, you know, it's since then. But, you know, so, you know, to me, that needs to be remedied ASAP so that, that we don't have any kind of downstream property issue. I agree. I, mean, I think the contract is okay to start installing the pond. I don't think that's an issue. I'm not really sure why we haven't started yet. You no, know, because he simply didn't want to turn out, wanted to get the, the guidelines from us and everything else instead of doing the job twice. No, it, it was the site walk. I was told that it was because they wanted to be able to bring heavy equipment around that side of the building to drop off the HVAC unit that um, hasn't been approved that yet. Makes some sense too. That is my preference. If it's going to hold up the permitting process, we're going to have to find some other way to get it in there and get that retention pond built right away because we need to get our CEO on the storage aspect of this thing as soon as possible so we can come in here with the upgraded version for you soon. I, I, I think that I, the, the pond was part of the original stormwater management the, the aspect of the entire
entire application. That that entire building sheds water in, in that direction to, toward that pond. Uh, you, you have a big heavy rain, and I, I, I know you told us that the sidewalk is no no problem in the. It disappeared in the stone. I, 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 I understand that. Uh, we'll make the pond. But, We're not going to argue about it. I guess my question is, you know, obviously the pond's not going to be completed. Well, it will be completed prior to getting the Odyssey permit. Um, but I guess we need approvals from you guys whether or not I'm going to, you know, modify the pond. So I don't know if you can start the pond. Again, again Paul, that it, it all comes back to the need for the door. Right. The so door is needed. It's then not it makes the, it's makes not the, needed. Okay. So, so then we can take it out. Done. So that, means, that means don't I mean, physically start building the pond. Then. Right. Positive. So that, positive. Okay. Good. Not okay. Good. So that means but, you can start building the pond. Yeah. I don't have to worry about size and the culvert and the berm and right. all. Uh, good. I, I thought that you when you sized this plan with with doing the pipe connecting the two sides of that retention. I mean, we talked about this yeah. at the last meeting. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to. Figure, I mean, instead of. Doing, I mean, if, if the culvert, as you designed it on this one, satisfies the flow requirements, then do we need to take the door out? Yeah. In my opinion, no. If the door, so if the door is, yes. you, you think the door needs to go? Yeah. Well, okay, what? Because there's no need for it. Well, then I, I have to I'm, look at the next I thing is once I have a door in the berm, they're going to physically have to walk on top of brass berm in order to yeah. exit the building. So. I mean, that well, gives you a means of egress. You've got the front door this way. Yeah. You don't have to be on that side at all. Personally, if they don't need the door, I'd rather see them eliminate the door. But if you want to work with the pond, then we can do that. So we'll discuss that. I, I, you guys are okay. I, I, and I'm, and I'm bring fine. us back the solution that you come up with. I'm, I'm fine problem. either way. I think I, That's all I just, know. Just, I, I'm not an engineer or a fire yeah. official or anything. Well, Mar I mean, Marty's got Having a door back there probably isn't a bad idea. Just design the pond to accommodate it and move on. I mean, I would like to build a bridge, but that'd be a structure, right? So I can't do that in some packs, right? Right. right. So I, mean, I think that'd be nice. Paul, well, you, 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 you got the culvert that connects. Yes. Now, you told me already you've done this. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right, so we're all set with that. <laughs> so yeah. bring, bring us back the solution. Yeah. Uh, we've addressed the detention bond. Uh, uh, we've got the bird to be constructed. That, that again, we basically talked about that. that. Yep. Additional lighting. Uh, a couple of lights, maybe, but I, I guess a lot of it does depend on uh, the notes that we have. So more lights begs the cumulative effect question right. and may require a photometric analysis to make sure no light is being shed off properly. So, can you point to us? All the way. I'm not sure what he's talking about for additional lighting. It just says an applicant is seeking Probably. additional wall pack for buildings one and two. It doesn't tell us how oh, oh much else. I don't know if it was the first phase or if that was the second phase anymore. I have to go back and look at it. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then there's the paving issue because this is Upper Thatcher Brook, which is a restricted EPA watershed. Okay. Now, now as far as the paving issue goes, we were doing the sidewalk that the area was already gravel. Am I, am I incorrect? No, nope, you're right. Okay. I, 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 I'm still learning. But gravel is, is an impervious surface also, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. From the, from the yeah, stormwater perspective. From the stormwater yes. perspective. So and, and am I happy that there's 2,500 square feet, which, uh, again, or, you know, 250 square feet, I would, you know, be like, who, not who cares, but, you know, a, a, a minor thing. Um, but it, as a practical matter, the, 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 the paving should not have been done. However, it's not actually increased. It, it, if it's true that that was gravel before, it's not increasing the impervious surface. On the site, right? Yeah, I, I don't know whether it was gravel before. Was not. I was not young. Yeah. When we, we looked at it the first time before yeah. we put the first building, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, we're going, going, going around with the first Yes, because that was Kenny's RV. Yeah. Okay. And that was all gravel in was gravel park. Okay. That's so, where so, the so light so post was and everything else yeah. along yes. the back of the property line. When I think, when I think the gravel calculation, it came up like 2.99 acres of impervious area. Just to avoid site law, because the site law was three acres back then. And when I did the location of it, and calculated how much gravel it was, it was just under three acres. So someone was very careful to not, not avoid these and see, see, see that back then. So, <clears throat> are we still at 2.99 acres, or are you at 3.1? Oh, well, I think we're actually we reduced it. We took out some pavement here, we took out some pavement here. We um, This was all pavement. I can't even cut it. This was pavement. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not clear. Are, are we still at two uh, under three, no, we're under three, three acres? acres yes. We've actually reduced it. Because this right here was one big concrete ramp. And what is that now? It's grass area right now. Okay, that's where that. Uh, but, I didn't but look that's, that's grass. Where, but, it's but, it proposed but, to be grass. But, you know, but, it's not finished. But, Paul, that the, the other flip side of your drawing showed some kind of fancy raised podium type thing. Correct. In that's, that spot. That's correct. Which would be additional impervious area, which would take you over the three acres. No, it? It, it's still over existing gravel that was existing gravel. This is whole site is gravel. I'm confused. Paul, you Paul, just said, you, you can't just have said it both ways. You, yeah, you just said that, that that it's over existing gravel. If it's over existing gravel, then it's an impervious surface, and you have more than three acres worth of space there. That it's going no, to be over. No, no, no. It no, was 2.99 before. No, that, that was all 99 right. takes in consideration yeah. of everything. Oh, sunny. Right, the whole right. site was gravel. And the whole thing's in the gravel building. This was a huge concrete pad here. Right, right down. It was a loaning dock. Richard, I, I share your confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty much the whole pad there. was a gravel surface. Or, or it's building, building on gravel. Or, or it's all building on gravel. Yeah, like that, that, that area where the raised podium was going to go, was that counted as impervious surface for the original 2.99? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And that original 2.99 was before the 2,500 square feet of new pavement, or 3,200 square feet of new pavement was added in. Over the existing 2.99. Nothing's been gone beyond 2.99. Okay. So nothing still in that same realm. We're in the tight glove. Yeah. We're not outside the, the you, area you, that you, was. You've done that actual calculation based on what was actually paid. Yes. A number of times. So can you show us the calculations? I think I have given to you in the past. Okay. Yes, I I'll, look, I'll, I'll look I can back. I that again. Yeah. I think I gave it When we came into the new amended plan, I gave some new calculations. Okay. And, and you may have them. I just, yeah, I no, just don't have them. I have some. It's been a while since I, I looked at yeah. them. Okay. So, okay, the increased pavement, right? Right, yeah, it, and our note specifies that Upper Thatcher Brook is the, the EPA is looking at that going, yeah, this is not a good, a good place. And everything there goes into Thatcher Brook. You know, again, the buildings have drip edges, kind of, you know, made it better than what it used to be. Uh, the tension pond's going to handle some of the so, but basically, a lot of these uh, stone drip are going to actually help in the board part of the project. Yeah, and, roof, and roof runoff is a better runoff, obviously, than pavement or yeah. pavement runoff. But so it's, it's a better quality. Okay, there, there's, I'm, there's a. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm not confusing this site with another site, but isn't this? Doesn't the water to the south run off to a different place? For, for the yeah, parking this, lot section on the southern this, side, this section that section, in, in, yeah, in that's, south, okay, yeah. yeah, that's that's what and I was thinking. I, was, yes. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. I closed out him, not uphill over the other way. Okay. There, there's there's in the staff note about increased paving. There is. Uh, it, it says the cumulative size of the parking area requires additional landscape landscape treatment under LUO 5.12.3.3C. Now, okay, we just let, let, let it's the uh, very first three, top of three, three, three. Uh, page here. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. okay. yeah. Complete yeah. fairness the applicant. Yeah. Let me make clear. I, I, I printed this out and read this this afternoon. 
because we got it this morning. No. Last yesterday. No, whatever. Came in yesterday. I didn't read it until I got here. Okay. Well, it, it came in. It, bottom line is we we just got this. I haven't looked up what the section of the land use ordinance is. To be perfectly honest with you, I didn't I didn't notice this. But it's a, a carryover. But if 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 the increased paving takes you over some threshold um, for landscape treatment, then it, it's up to Paul to work with code enforcement and the planning the town planner to figure out how to get in compliance there. No problem. That section, I've read that section a number of times. It's pretty confusing, but no problem. I'll check it, I'll check it out again. All right. <laughs> It's definitely uh, a yeah, rock yeah. and roll. I didn't write it. I know, it's, it's a pretty confusing thing. We don't have anybody to explain it to us. The last one is the box trailer. Yes. That's going to be gone. Okay. Off site. Gone. Yeah, so off site's gone. Right. So can I understand yeah. why? Yeah, it's within the wetland. It's, it's in the wetland. To the west of building two, according according to the staff notes. And, and we did notice when we were out there on the sidewalk, there was stuff in the wetlands. Yeah. And, and, I, and I mentioned that. We had yeah. stuff that was in the wetlands that had to get out of there. Okay. Come, come, come see. And that's, that's what the so, staff yeah, notes I, referenced. The stuff that was in the wetlands and the so box trailer. what do we need to do with the box trailer? The box trailer yeah. needs yeah. to be moved. Okay. I misunderstood what you said. I okay. meant it needed to get out yeah. of the property. Yeah, it, it, uh, it, just, it needs to be out of the wetland. Yeah, right. And it's shown where we're putting on the plant. Yes. It's shown the location of it. Yeah, that's not a problem. I think I have a pretty good direction of where the board's coming from. I don't know if the applicant and the agents want to have any other questions for the board so we can be a little clearer. But well, I, I, am, I am concerned about something that I have heard, and I need clarification on Buses, tour buses, drop people off on Route 1 so they can walk in there and review all of the, the vehicles. They are treating it as if it were a museum. We had one incident last fall when a bus running from Portland ship did uninvited, unannounced, stopped and let people off. Okay. We needed to that, may, that may be what this person was talking about. Who, who is that person? I can't tell you. I I heard about it from the town planner. The town planner, somebody told the town planner about it. Rich, I, I, I get, we actually get tour buses with Japanese people stopping to take pictures of my cows. Oh, no. And, 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 and wow. they, they, I, I've gotten a call from the, I've gotten a, I once got a call from the tour bus driver wanting to know which pasture the cows were in. I thought it was a crank call, and I and I said, "What what what the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> well, you well, he said, "Explain." I said, "Well, you're out of luck. They're in the pasture behind the house." He said, "That's perfect. I'll park on the Durrell's Bridge, and they can take pictures of the cows." What what I'm getting at is they've got no control over oh, the, no, 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 over what a tour bus does. Well, they, uh, they, they, they have no they control can, over can, it. But if if they if want they to treat this as a museum, if they, if which would be they, an encouragement. They, they have been clear that, I, I, that they have identified a loophole. And, I'm and not I think, sure they have. Okay. Well, but, but, but that's, that's a whole other issue. That, that's, that's the whole that's new issue. issue. As, as long as they're not encouraging tour buses from stopping here, okay. I, I'm going to Why say, do I want tour buses to stop? You, 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 you would service and sell cars. No, no buses I, do not. I, 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 that was my whole point about the cows, okay? <laughs> I, 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 we have the cows to sell beef. The people taking pictures of them aren't buying steak, okay? <laughs> yeah. We were coming out of our road in Rangeley once, and there was a tour bus stop to watch a, a guy cutting a tree, and they cheered when it hit the ground. It was pretty oh, yeah. pathetic. But that's what they do. Yeah, that so wasn't me, because if I had been cutting it, it would have hit the building. <laughs> I know what they do. I think, uh, so I think so I just want to make it, I just want to clarify what what, we, what deliverables we have for you. And I, I think there are two items, Paul. One is we need to do, we need to do the calculation on the retention pond. 
and give them a, a proposal either with the door in or with the door out and make, right. door out. verifying for them that the numbers work. And you need to do the calculation for the covert. Mm -hmm. Either the, the design, right. come up with a design that satisfies the, you know, the, the legal requirements mm -hmm. and just be able to certify to them that that's the case. There, and, there's a, there, there's at, least, at least a third thing, which it, is documentation that the from somebody Shame that the propane Shame lines Shame were laid correctly. And, and, and the lighting correct plan. material. Because it, it, if, if you're going to add in new lighting, we need to know that that's not going to create uh, require a photometric or whatever. And then um, review that again. Yeah. Yeah. Coordinate the landscaping. And, and, the, and the landscaping with, with that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the landscaping is going to be part of that phase three that Paul was referring to. Yes. No, well, actually, actually, the, no, no, it's not, it's not, it's not phase three. Point. What the planner is saying is that the additional paving oh, okay. triggers, the one note, the note triggers. Okay. Yes. Yep. yes. So just, just coordinate. Yep. Thank you, guys. Okay. Can the door just be, you know, covered over, handles off kind of thing? No. Down? It has to just out. Out. But it's either, it's either it's either out or it can stay. It's mm -hmm. all calculated. No, no just take it out. Simple and plain. No, it's a lot of money to get another piece of that building. It, does, it doesn't have to, the door doesn't have to necessarily have to come out. Maybe, maybe it's a good idea to have a fire exit right. back there. Just it's, for a storage building, it doesn't need it. Simple and plain. I've been through the fire code marshals. Okay. It you're, doesn't need it. You're right, it doesn't need it, but it doesn't mean that it can't be there. That's right. So I, I hear it's a good counter You can have it there, to... whether you, if it were needed, it would be one thing. And there'd be no question you have to have it. It's there now. The question becomes, do we make you take it out? Well, my, 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 the, my philosophy why? is I would, point blank. The tension pond. My, my philosophy is it's not needed. But maybe it might be needed in the next project. But if it's not needed in this project, don't let's play peekaboo ahead of it. And I well, I, Marty, 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 I, 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 I now understand. do you see where I'm coming Marty, from? Marty, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I've got to res respectfully di disagree. Because okay. with the propane tanks gone, Paul does have more room for a longer detention pond uh, there. And we, we do know that the applicant is coming forward. With something. Yeah. Ho hopefully, they're going to fix this get in compliance so that they can come back with the, the next phase of what they're doing. And having a fire exit, an additional fire exit, just doesn't yeah. seem like a bad idea to me. Why not let them, yep. if, if, yep. if Paul can come up with a design, and take care of the stormwater management, and, and that door is an effective fire exit with whatever is required to make it that, I, I'm not sure I understand why we can't let them do that. I, 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 I respect, but what, what's the rest of the board think? We need well, to give them clear direction. It should be up to I'm their discretion. Yeah. Whichever way they feel solve the problem, fine. Right. And that's what they're here for. They're here to get yeah. direction. Yeah. Okay. And I, yeah. And I thank you very much. I, be quite honest, <coughs> you know, when when this whole first thing first showed up, I was quite. If somebody had said, tell them to put it back the way it was supposed to be, I probably would have agreed with them. I would have said, yeah, okay. This was the plan that you submitted. This is the way it is supposed to be. And, and I will tell you that going forward, any conditional use permit that we let you have will state that a violation means you're coming back in front of us and we're going to discuss whether we revoke the permit, which would shut down anything that happens. Understood. How soon can we come back? Uh, the 15th, I believe, is the earliest. That's the third Thursday. The third Thursday. Can we look at that? It's the oh, the first 8, 15 is the sequence. So would they be? So that, well, then, no. Then they get off the 8th. No, second and fourth. Second and fourth. Right. So right. it's the 8th. So it would be the 8th. Look in the calendar. Yeah, no, it would be the 8th and the 22nd. It would be the 8th and the 22nd. So it would probably be the 22nd. Yeah, I agree. Because we've got some ordinance revisions and other stuff that we're going to be working on and starting to develop. So we're looking at the 22nd. So I build a retention pond between now and then. You work with Paul, Paul and you come up with... His design, 
and build it to his design. Okay. And if we want to have access to that rear door, we'll design something that meets the numbers and we'll get that built so all that's ready for the June 22nd review and approval. Right. And you need to make sure you coordinate with the code enforcement officer so he's out there before the next meeting. Okay. So, so you're looking at everything so that when you come back with a plan, staff can tell us it, 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 it's, been done. It, 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 it's been done, the drawing call is presenting to you has been reviewed. And, and that will be the same with the culvert. Um, when he wants a catch basin there or a flared end or yeah, a larger what, pipe. What, whatever it is. Whatever, I'm you, whatever you come up with. Build it. So it is. Correct. Have it ready yeah. for you folks. Ready for us on the 22nd. We can go through, we can say, yes, everything yeah. is fine, and then if you want to proceed forward with whatever the next phase happens to be, submit it. Well, let's look I, I'm sorry, Rich, I'm not trying to be difficult for that. No, Let me ask okay. a question. What, what, if, what if Paul designs something uh, and, kind of the same and, point. And, <laughs> they, and the applicant spends money on it, uh, and for some reason the town planner or the town code enforcement officer say, no, that doesn't work. It, it, they, or, or, I, I guess what I'm getting at is the, the, the if the applicant's representative and the applicant and the contractor can work collaboratively with town officials between now and June 22nd and make sure that the town officials are, or the code commission officers specifically, is okay with what they're doing before they do it. Uh, where, where I'm going is, I, I, don't, I don't know whether, we, we could either say, come back to us on the 22nd with a plan, don't do anything between now and then, come back to us with a plan. Or we can say, work with the town, to remedy. Do, do it, fix it, and come back to us on the 22nd with a kind of solution an plan, already right? done that's been done collaboratively with the town. Oh, that's that's yeah. what I was expecting. Right. I, I, I understand. I just want to be really clear that that's what... But we gave them a very clear direction of urgency on the, the stormwater basin. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think that to me is straightforward enough if they choose to keep the door and Paul has to do two little right. basins with a culvert. I think, you know, we've seen we've seen Paul's work enough to know that, you know, he's probably going to design something that is adequate, you know, for, for our review of that. Mm -hmm. Right? And the benefit of getting it in outweighs the risk of, you know, wanting it a little longer here or there, which, you know, the, the contract probably would accommodate. My thought something be, with, the culvert, with the culvert, with the culvert, might be a little different. right? Especially if you if you started to get into some more expensive alternatives other than just ripping it out. I would, I would, if I was the owner, I wouldn't want to jump into something without having a pretty good, pretty good indication from the town. So, 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 I, so I guess what we're really talking. About. Now, in the second, resolve the, the, the is there door isn't there to the retention pond, but come back to us with a plan for the culvert and backside of the door. Is that right? So I think if he if he works with Ted and and Jerry and they get we've given them direction if if they can get all of that, if they can get it all done by the 22nd and they come back and they say, here's here's what you told us to do, we've done it, here's the, the planner and the CEO saying, yes, they did what they were supposed I, to I, do. I'd much rather have them come back well, as far as the culvert and stormwater. With, with one exception. Okay. If they remove the culvert altogether and put it back to the proposed plan, then they're in compliance with their approved plan. Correct. Okay. So that I mean that would be right. an alternative that you know 
you do some work back there that that right. gets you right back. To I'm just one. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't have a misunderstanding right. where the applicant spends a lot right. of money right. doing something that that, that right. comes to the June twenty second meeting and we don't like we it. don't like it. we right. don't like it. Yeah, I agree. I think okay. the pond's no brainer because that's either extend a little bit to my couch, extend a little bit, take care of the bridge that I'm making out of yeah. natural earth. That's a no brainer. Okay. It's not a bridge. It's, we can a call, it's, a it's a causeway fault. It's not a bridge. Right. That's right. It's a causeway. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. How'd your back call go? Okay. Up, Marty? How's your back call? Did Bobby get it done? Yeah. Starting it. Oh, Item number three. Item I remember now seeing this one. Well. Abraham with Cottage Preserve an amendment to the original subdivision approval. A request to modify approved construction schedule for secondary means of egress to Mountain Road based on a number of units occupied versus phasing or relocation of units in phase two. meeting there are two items that we're we were talking about for approval as an amendment to the, the overall subdivision plan one is the changing of note number six on the approved subdivision to change the time frame bear with me for a second uh, for the construction of the emergency access road route one phase one two three effectively Emergency access road is the construction all the way out to Hid Meadows Drive with a gate and a gravel road. The uh, original approval had phased the, to triggered the commencement of that to the commencement, commencement of that road to the commencement of phase three. And just because of the timing, again, backing up the way units are sold, Joe was building one section only and, and selling those units. They're sort of they're, they're crossing hazard. We've got units that are being built for both phases. Some units are going will be going to phase three, and they intend to start the construction of the access road very shortly. We'll wait for final DEP. They have to do a, an internal review approval. And what we'd like to do is rather than triggering it to the beginning of phase three, which the road won't be done until this fall, maybe early winter. At that point, the expectation is that there will be foundations in the ground on phase three and ready for occupancy, and that would hold up the marketing of, of, the, of the project. What we'd like to do is simply tie the phasing of the access road to the number of units rather than to the actual start of phase three. And it just gives them a little lead time. We didn't want to get caught in a trap where all of a sudden he's got units to sell on phase three and the road's not done. So, at the last meeting, it was requested that we get a letter from the fire chief, which we did, and I believe you have in your packet, a letter dated May 13th. Uh, I have a letter dated May 3rd that does not say anything. I'm sorry, May 3rd. And this letter says that... Uh, it simply says that they reviewed the request. There is nothing in here that says one way or the other. No, there's another they letter. Accepted. I apologize, but there's another letter, and it's right there, and it was submitted you have, to you folks. You have this letter? I'm sorry. This is the letter that we have. No, this is the letter May that you submitted. Let me read the same letter we have. That's the same letter. Yeah. There's nothing in here that indicates one way or the other. This is just how the fire chief feels about it. Can I read the, a letter just for the... Absolutely. Yeah, this letter is to verify. We've met with the chief. The chief is... Absolutely satisfied with this request. And I'll explain why. This letter is to verify Town of Arundel Fire Rescue has reviewed the request from Cape Arundel Cottage Preserve to amend Note 6 of the approved subdivision plan 
to allow up to 63 units occupancy permits to be issued in phases one, two, and three collectively prior to the completion of the emergency access road to Hidden Meadows Drive. That's exactly what we're talking about. So what we're saying is, in other words, the same number of if the issue of public safety. If we have 63 units that would have been constructed here, does it really matter whether those units are constructed? You've got somebody here and then somebody over here. We're saying let's tie it to the number of units, not to the actual phase lines. All we're looking for is a little latitude on the construction of the road. The road's going to start under construction. We didn't want that to hinder, to get caught in a trap where there are people ready for occupancy in this phase, and the road's not built, and you can't get occupancy permits. And that really crushes the marketing uh, for the units. We're trying to keep things moving along. So, um, so the chief, we met with the chief. Chief is satisfied. Uh, there's no public safety issue with that. And so we leave it up to the board if the board is agreeable to amend note six to say something to the effect of uh, emergency access over the proposed Patriots Way shall be provided to Hidden Meadows Drive before the occupancy of the 64th unit, regardless of which phase that unit is constructed in. Said access shall be gated as indicated on these plans, or any other similar wording that the board would be comfortable with. I don't like that wording because it doesn't say phases one, two, or three. It says 64 permits, so you could issue a permit out in phase five, and we, we, there's we, no we, way to get out there. We, we can revise that language it, to say, okay. yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I talked to the, to the deputy chief today, mm -hmm. and he doesn't like the idea of not having the road completed through the mountain. To, May I? Yes, sir. I met with the general. You and he Randall. absolutely was satisfied. I met with Randall today. At well, I wish that somebody, I, I'll not. be honest with you, I really have gone out of my way to meet everything that I possibly could. Now, I met with the gentleman, and I ate while he was eating his lunch, and he says, Joe, I got no problem with this, but the chief has to sign the letter. Now, the chief met with me, we walked it. He said, Joe, I got no problem with this. This is a safe site. I can get my fire trucks in and out of here, ambulances in and out of here. I don't have a problem. So what's the difference if I shut phase two down and I build in phase three and I still have 63 units? There isn't a difference, guys. And really, honestly, it's killing me because DEP helped me up for four months for no reason at all. It had to do with pervious and impervious. We reduced the impervious and they wouldn't still let us go forward with the work so that we could then come back with the calculations which they had in the book this deep, but they didn't do their job because they were too lazy to read the book. So now I'm going to lose another six months possibly with the chief said, and you better talk to the chief, and I, I please beg you, talk to the chief because this could put a real damper on our project. And I don't want to do that because the minute we stop construction, Somebody right away says, boom, they got a problem. And it really, really hurts. And we're not asking for anything unreasonable here. What we're asking for is 63, okay, permits to occupy. We're not changing anything else. So what's the difference if I have a, a phase one, two, or phase one, two, and three? And he's satisfied with it. Through the chair, if we need to amend our note, we're here to, to work with the board. We need to amend our note that says within phases one, two, and three, which is the intent. Absolutely, we're, we're amenable. The whole point is there's no, the purpose of the emergency access road, I, I have to come back to this, this the, the premise of emergency access road, in my opinion. Emergency, secondary means of access are just that, in my opinion. It's, and people may think otherwise. It's the case that a single emergency, a single access to a development, a tree could fall down, you could have that tree multiple car accident at the entrance, so you need a second way to get in. We have a project that have no large trees in the in the main access routes. We have underground power, so but nonetheless something could happen. So emergency access basically tells us in terms of safety, you get to a critical point where you've got a certain number of units and people living here, we should have a secondary means of access in case the worst case situation came up. Absolutely, that's why it was there. So whether those 63 units are here, 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 doesn't make a whole lot of difference, really. The second means of access is just that. It's a secondary means of access in a worst-case scenario when the primary means of access 
is blocked. And I will but, agree with you that it doesn't make a difference if it's in sections one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. The original reason that we had that going out through to Mountain Road was, was so that if there was something going on in sections four, five, six, they can get there quicker going through Mountain mm -hmm. Road than they can coming down and going out and around. We had we had a great many discussions about whether or not you had to complete it, and we said no. Will after you start on phase two, you, or after, after you sell through phase two, before you start phase three, right. you have to complete the road. Right. If you want to ask us to change it so that it's after you finish phase three, you have to start the road. That's different than saying we want to be able to put in 64 units because I understand you have people who want to put units in the back section that would be accessed off Mountain Road. No, no, that's, no that's, that's through like, the chair. We cannot. We cannot we come in to. through Mountain Road. That's in your documents. That's an unfounded rule. That's an unfounded rule. I don't know who's coming up with these stories. No, it's not, <laughs> no, we're not talking about your being able to come <laughs> in or the residents to be able yeah. to come in. But you have, I, I've been told that there are people who want to build out in section four, out well, on the, that's they don't want yeah. to build We're down not in the front. opening oh. up section four because first of all, we don't have DEP approval. How can I open it up? I don't have anything dealing with stormwater approval. We'll go to, I don't have any power, or utilities there. How can I build anything there? But to, 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 the, to the chairman's point, if what you just suggested, we're absolutely agreeable with. And we're, we're trying to work with it. If, it, if we want to amend the note that says build the construction access road by the completion of phase three, we're absolutely fine with that. Because well, we, when you say the completion of phase three, that will be done. That's yeah. not, but it's the 63 number that is, is I'm trying to tie it into. Is it, between the 63, we're saying, what difference does it make? So I brought the chief up there. We went through the site. We, he said, Joe, I don't have a problem with this. And the reason we went to the chief was because when we were here for the last meeting, it was a safety issue. Correct. Okay, so we went to the chief and said, tell us what we have to do to meet this requirement. And I explained it to him. I had lunch with the lieutenant. Okay, now the lieutenant, the deputy chief, and he had nothing to say other than, Joe, I don't have a problem. And uh, this is, I mean, now if he changes his mind, that's different, okay? And he said, but the chief has to deal with this. And so we brought the chief in, we went through it, and he said, Joe, remember when we were here last Thursday, and they called him in because there were some concerns? And even at that time, on phase two, he says, I don't have a problem, guys. We're fine here. The lieutenant was there. The deputy chief was there, and all three of them agreed. They had no idea why this is coming up again. But I said, the reason it is, is this note on the plan, and we have to deal with this note, chief. He said, I'm fine. You get through the chair, I think. Well, I wish we had the chief here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he wrote that letter, and I apologize, and I mean it. But, but he wrote the letter that says he doesn't have a problem. Doesn't but but that does, that's not what this says. This just says he reviewed the note. That's all it said. I looked at the note. He, he didn't go one way or the other as to whether he thought it was a good idea. He just looked at the note. His move with the chair. Can I ask this related question? Sure. Uh, I, I've, I've got a, a, a list of building permits that we were given at the, at the last meeting. And if I understood correctly and counted correctly, there are 67 units already under construction. Is that right? Something that's 60, including yeah, the 67 yeah, on the construction. Does it mean that they're sold? It doesn't yeah, mean they're sold. I, I understand they're not sold, but they're not sold. But, but, but they're, they're not occupied. I know, mm -hmm. but there's 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 still buildings that yes that might require emergency rescue service, either for construction personnel or or for fire reasons. I guess my question is, if if, if you've already said, I can't imagine it takes that long build these things? It does take two, three, four months. I'm building to custom. I'm not building cracker boxes like uh, people thought we were. We're building everything to custom. I had to hire special people to handle the change orders. I've got change orders of $150,000. Sometimes it takes me six months to build a unit. Okay. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. Um, I, I guess my, my I'm, I'm, I'm questioning, I guess I'm 
questioning the urgency of uh, of, of this when you've already got 67 units under construction. The urgency is to continue construction because if I stop, the outside world thinks there's a problem. And, 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 I, and that's a fact. I, 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 that's no, a fact I, in this business. Oh, oh no, I, 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 okay. I, I understand and, that. And let me tell you something. Business. I could have 60 sold by the end of this year, which is great for the town because you guys win. All right. So that means that if I have 60 sold by the end of next year, I have to have inventory. We closed during the winter this year. We sold during the winter this year because people want to be in there May 1st or June 1st or whatever. So I have to keep going. I'm not. You will talk to the chief, I'll talk to the chief. What he said to me was, I don't have a problem, Joe. We were concerned about safety, I hit it right on because I'm concerned about safety. All right? So I went to the chief, walked the property, and I explained to him the situation. And he said, Joe, I don't have a problem. So I'm here begging your mercy because I have to continue. I lost four months because of DP for no reason at all, and they're holding us up again on the road. We submitted the road approval about four months ago, and they're still sitting on it. Through, through, through the chair, sir, it is, how many units total are there in phases one, two, and three? When you total it all together, it's probably somewhere around 120, 160 some odd. 162. Oh, okay. 120. So, I'm sorry. 126. 127. Okay. So, so, so what what you are asking for is that the requirement be changed from the completion of phase two to the trigger being occupancy of 63 units. 63 units, yeah. and you're perfectly comfortable with those 63 units having to be in phases one, two, or three. Absolutely. Absolutely, Absolutely. I am. Okay, that, 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 okay. I'm sorry, that, that yeah. wasn't clear to okay. No, no, no. I just want to make it clear. First of all, we're, we're working here. We've been working in here, oh God, for how long blasting and drilling? I'd say for eight months, nine months. We're just starting to open this up a little bit for us to start putting foundations in so that we can show people that we're still moving forward. I probably have another six to seven months worth of blasting that's being completed, but I have to crush all this stuff down, guys. And it's going to, I probably got uh, 17, 35, about 60,000 cubic yards of material that I'm creating. There's no way on God's earth I'm going to be able to be even close to doing anything there this year in terms of construction. I'll be lucky if I can get up to this point. But it shows that I'm moving forward in the way I worked it out because, again, a safety factor with the chief and I think you folks as well. What we end up doing is we follow Grondon in and we block off this road that says all of the work is being done here so that there's no heavy equipment here. And then we basically gate this so it's strictly for construction heavy equipment. So we keep everybody out. Most likely, I won't probably do that. If I were to deliver six or seven units here, 10 units, 12 units at the most, probably wouldn't be until September or October. And I'm hoping by then, God help us with DP, that this would be on the way. But what bothers me is there's been rumors all over the place. Us coming in here, we have no right to come in this way. And there's no way that people can even Yep. I, I, haven't, I haven't heard that you want to come in that way. I don't want to come in that way. What, I, what I've heard is that you have people who want to buy units out there. And if you if they really, buy really units out there, there's no way to get yeah. emergency vehicles yeah. yeah. out to them, <laughs> which is my concern that's with having the road that's finished. Okay. Really. Here's the scenario. Yeah. I'll give you a great example. Kenneth Roberts' estate is owned by this lady. Oh, is it really? Uh, I just can't I think of the lady's name. Again. She, again, came, yes, she yes. came to <laughs> us two years ago. She saw the plan. And she says, Joe, I want that lot. Okay. I said, that won't be ready probably for about four years. I'm waiting. Now, if the word gets out that she's got a reservation and somebody says that's sold, it's going to be occupied? No. Because I have no utilities here. I have to wait for. DEP approval, and I have to bring all of the utilities up, and I wouldn't do that because I have an agreement with you guys. The agreement okay. is that I go in phases. If I decide to build up there, 
Then I have to come back to you guys and say, I'm building here, I'm abandoning there, and I have to explain to you why. It doesn't make any sense for me to jump around. Because, believe me, to go from this point to that point with the community center that cost me two and a half million bucks in developing 1,200 linear feet in pure ledge with only 31 units on it to sell, that hurts. That's <laughs> pretty pricey. Okay? So now I've got the ability because now this is yes. volume right. density. And, and okay. like I said, I don't have yeah. a problem if we go go at it with 64 yeah. units through right. phase three. Right. And I, I just have that's a problem. The that's that's what the we, we sort of yeah. Yeah. clarified yeah. last week, yeah. I your absence. That's the okay. intent. Your, your, I don't want... Ago. To deliver with occupancy permit right. more than 63 units. I'm willing to live by that number that you guys put there. The only thing I'm asking is, can I incorporate some of the 63 in phase three? That's all I'm asking. So phases one and two total 63 units. No, phases one and two, I believe, are 60. We get the two, the four of Mr. Yeah. Cruz. 60, 67 maybe. That, that, that's okay. yeah. But, yeah. but, yeah. but that, in, that's in, in it, this it, respect, it, too, now. And I, you probably would consider models as part of the safety factor because there's people in there, but even though they're not living there. Mm -hmm. That includes four models, yes. Okay. Yeah. But we're, we're, we're I, totally fine with the triggering. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're absolutely fine with that language. Through, through the chair, it, it, sir, you, you sat through a couple of our meetings. Yeah. It's, you, you, I, I, I hope you appreciate that we, we have different kinds of applicants. I know. <laughs> Believe me. I know. And I know you have a job to do for the town, and I'm all for it. You know, and I'm sorry if I you know, have a little passion tonight in me because of all these delays, because of not you guys, but the DEP. If you only knew it's what government. it cost us. What you want? Mm -hmm. Government. Exactly. Well, okay. So that's all I gotta say. So, so hey, let's be on that. Gentlemen, let's thank you. Let's and I apologize. Yes, I apologize. Yes, and that's quite okay. Let's look at this. We're being asked to make three adjustments. Do they put wait, do they put the driveways in and how they were going to be? Yes, I can yeah. respond to that to the chair tomorrow. That was the biggest concern yeah. we asked. Because you didn't know what way you were going to flip them, right or left. Right. We actually have a, a modification we talked to Tad about. That's badly. You know what he said? We don't We have a modification of uh, our, our request in front of you. And you're going to think that we're kind of lulu here, but we had requested that, that units. 114, is that 114 and 63 Correct. be relocated. Mm -hmm. and this is the yeah. information you dropped off this afternoon? No. 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 We were hey, Brian, you were gone. Yeah. Oh, no. You were gone. Yeah. These yes. were dropped off at Town yeah. Hall today. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. We, we discussed this with Tad. And with, with the, uh, the last meeting, we were requesting the relocation of a unit here. This is a different board. 49. Yeah. I believe it's unit 49. S 63. No, 63, sorry. 63. Was going to be moved from Pepperell Circle to this spot right here. I know it's hard to see from where you're at. And then Unit 114 is really tight. We want to move it to an open spot right here. We'd like to revise our request to not relocate number 63. So it's only 114 for the following reason. It's a great little spot to move it. The reason we wanted to move for those that wanted to request me to move 63 at this cul de sac up here. On plan, it fits, but you get up there and it's, it's open. It's going to be a tough unit because you've got three sides with roads. Um, mm -hmm. and from a market perspective. After looking at the cost with Grandin of moving it, because we had to have special utilities and its own sewer line and ledge, and we're dealing with the water district, it, it just was cost prohibitive. So I, we apologize for the inconvenience, but we would like to modify our request to only relocate Unit 114, not 63. And the second part of that request was down here in Phase 4, the revised plans due to DEP eliminated units. These are the old units. This was the old pond, as you recall. Units 163, 164, 165. We can't place them anymore because the pond grew because of the new DEP standards. And we'd like to reserve the ability to sometimes come back to the board and relocate them. So the numbers are still in the count. If we find a spot that we can relocate, then we would come back to the board. If that's acceptable and we, to the board. And we talked about that quite yeah. a bit at the yeah. last meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we're agreeable to that other than, I mean, we didn't make any final decision because of the 
looking to do the coordination with the fire chief. Correct, correct. And the driveway for unit 114 is now shown on the plat that's right. in front of you. That's the is that on the right side or the left side? You right side. Discuss moving the turnaround? And the moving of the turn, yes, this yeah. turnaround here was moved because there's no, the, the right. pond's been shifted up, so we moved the turnaround yeah. across the unit. So. Okay, right. So that's the objective. So but we have, if the board does approve, we do have plans and mylars here to, to sign. Right. And, and one of the reasons we moved 114, if you can see it, these tight. folks' backyards, his backyard, I mean, you get no privacy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So by yeah. relocating it, it opens it up and you give people uh, privacy. We did that on Ranger Lane, does, too. Does, 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 you say you brought my alarms. Does that specify that the 63 units are limited to phases one, two, and three? The note, no, the note, I figured would be a condition of approval. We can add that, whatever, whichever the, whatever the board's pleasure is, we can do it as a condition of approval or add it to the plan. We can get a modified from we can, we can add a note if you'd like. Yeah, that's no problem. And we can bring it back. That's not a problem. Let's give them the approval. That's the board's decision. Okay. Maybe we do that, but we don't have uh, we don't have any of the conditions that go with it. Oh, findings of fact. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry, findings of fact. But well, we could do that, and they could start folding. We can have the findings of fact, and the mylars can be fixed. It's right. right. It's an administrative item. Or so, 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 let, so let me know. I think we should make a formal decision. We okay. definitely need to make a formal decision. I, I mean, even if it's not, let, I shouldn't say a formal. I think we should make a decision so that these guys know, have some comfort going forward. It wouldn't be a formal decision until. Right. All of the whole mm -hmm. findings of fact, subdivision plan, yeah. you know, sure. all that okay. stuff. Sure. Okay. So, and so, 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 so let's, we, we can't actually pass a motion, but we can. No, we could. We can have some motion. Motion. We just don't have the findings of fact ready to go right. with it. So, so would the motion be, be conditioned upon the findings of fact? Yes. Yeah. Well, let's, okay. let's take I, these I, one. I, let's I, take I, these one at a time because there's three of them. So we'll be one, very two, clear. All, well, I think we, we should be very clear that we're okay. addressing all three. Let, let, uh, let, let me, I would like to make a motion that the uh, the trigger for the access to Mountain Road be changed from uh, commencement of Phase 3 to uh, the issuance of the 63rd occupancy permit. Uh, with the restriction that the units only be in phases one, two, or three. Okay. Well, second. second. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, the motion perfect. has been Thank made you. and seconded by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any discussion? All right, who wanted, Roger, you're, you're the official second. Okay, give it to Roger. Just a question, you know, it would be, you would be allowed to do 63 so that before you were able to get a occupancy permit on Unit 64, correct, correct, that would have to correct. The road have to be yep. constructed, and, and I just wanted to make sure yeah. I had it clear. Correct. correct. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, and I that's not exactly what I said. So, really, it sounded that's what it sounded like. But I think you forgot to include the, the road being. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because okay. it's a modification of the note, which would yeah have that effect. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Yeah. That is unanimous. Thank you. Then we're looking at uh, the relocation of Unit 60, uh, the relocation of Unit 114. Yep. Okay, I, I, I make a motion that we allow the applicant to relocate Section 114 as shown on the drawing received this afternoon uh, along, still on Kenneth Roberts Way. Yep, second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the recommendations uh, to move Unit 114. Yep. All those in favor? Yeah. It is unanimous. I'm assuming, right, Chip? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm the secretary. No, no. Take the notes. Okay. And the second one is the DEP mandated enlargement of the stormwater facility. Uh, they're asking for permission. They have to pull the units 163, 164, and 165, and they're requesting that they be permitted to plug them in at, at some future date. Right. So they, 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 wanted to, they wanted to maintain that that's overall right. density that the they density. had before. That's correct. Yep. Second that one. Who 
Who made the motion? You were running your mouth, so I let it go. What? I suck at it. <laughs> okay, then I'll take the motion. Uh, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, those are I, I'm, I'm sorry, wait a minute. What was the motion? The motion is to allow them to, based upon a DE mandated enlargement of the stormwater facility, uh, they have had to eliminate Units 163, 164, and 165, they would like to be able to hold them in abeyance and plug them in at a future date so that they can locations. maintain the correct numbers. I mean, uh, effectively, the once we do this, the approved subdivision plan will be three units shy. Correct. But the reserve, the there'll density, be some documentation yeah. and, and that reserve, reserve in place with the density that would allow you to amend and put those three back in. And, right. and, and you will have to come back to us. With right. Yeah, absolutely. But at least the, the numbers are there because it affects the condominium documents right. and everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. okay. no, we would have to come back to you folks. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we come back to you when we relocate just one unit. So we would have to come back when we relocate just three, three units. Or, or put three back in. We should, we should be able to have the, the findings of fact ready for the June 8th Perfect. Right. Perfect. Thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for There's everything, gentlemen. I'm sorry, we didn't vote on that, no. Rich. Oh. Yeah, I second you, that. You're Roger's voice of order. No, no, no. Vote on what? <laughs> what so that's that's the last one. Oh, we didn't no. vote on the last one. No. No. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Yes. It's right. unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. So late. Yes, thank you. <sighs> okay. The last item on the agenda is the planner's report and other business, and since the planner is not here, he cannot report to us. Although we could ask Phil yeah. to report to us. Uh, no. That being the chair. I'd like to make a motion with the chair. To the chair. Yeah, Marty. I did ask, I sent an email out, thinking to turn about the fire pond issue and everything else along the way. I did ask the chief to come tonight. I asked, I emailed him, because I understood that Tad wasn't going to be here, so instead of having somebody if there was questions, he could speak. And I, I stopped by today to see if he was going to be here. And he said no, so I told Randall he had to be, needed to show up. And I don't think so. Well, I'm just saying. We have, hey, Jamie, I'm sorry. we have one other item that we have to vote on before oh, okay. we adjourn. We have to recommend uh, up or down to the selectmen for the two ordinances. Uh, items that we held public hearings on today. We, so we need a motion to send that to the Board of Selectmen for inclusion on the warrant. I'll move to send them. Move that we forward the two, uh, two ordinance changes that were, were uh, public, publicly heard tonight to the Selectmen for inclusion on the warrant. Second that motion and maybe seconded. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, that was Roger's second. Yes, yeah. it was. Hearing no no other discussion, all those in favor? Hey. It's unanimous. Now we can adjourn. Sorry. Right. We need Roger made the motion. Who, who I made the it? motion. He made the motion, Roger said. No, no. The, the the I, I made the motion. I made the motion. I made the motion.